Flow Jiu-Jitsu, Awakening the Inner Martial Artist, first published in Okinawa, Japan, April 2024, first edition, all rights to the work. Helio Damiani Jr., reserved to the author. Special thanks. BJJ House, Okinawa students. Initial considerations. Dear reader, welcome to this book, the result of a passionate and transformative journey through the art and philosophy of jujitsu. Before we embark on this adventure, I would like to share a few words about the nature of this work. What you will find in the following pages is, above all, an honest account of my direct experience with this revolutionary practice. Every insight, every revelation, springs from the intimate, daily engagement with jujitsu as a path of self-discovery and awakening. Throughout the book, I occasionally draw on scientific studies and philosophical concepts to better illustrate and contextualize the ideas presented. However, it is essential to emphasize that these references are ancillary, aiming to enrich the understanding and not the basis of this work. Occasionally, I draw on insights from renowned psychologists such as Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, creator of flow theory, and on teachings from Buddhist masters on presence and awareness. But the core of this work remains my direct experience on the mats. So feel free to further explore these additional sources if they resonate with your interest. But always remember that the core of this work is the direct experience, the knowledge that can only be gained through dedicated practice and honest reflection. It is with humility that I share these words, as I recognize that I am not an expert in the academic fields mentioned. What I bring, however, is the wisdom gained through countless hours on and off the mats, a tireless exploration of the principles of flow jujitsu in practice. It is this living knowledge, tested and refined in the furnace of training, that I seek to share in these pages. This is, above all, an invitation, an invitation to dive deep into your own investigation to use the provocations contained herein as springboards for your own journey of discovery. Because at the end of the day, the only truly transformative answers are those that emanate from your direct experience. I recommend that you read slowly, with mindfulness, allowing each word to resonate in the chamber of your consciousness. And don't be surprised if, with each rereading, you come across a different book. Because as you delve deeper into the practice of flow jujitsu, your perception expands and new layers of understanding reveal themselves. Ultimately, what I offer here are not absolute truths, but a humble map based on my personal journey. A map for you to use as a starting guide, but one that should over time be replaced by your own inner exploration. May these pages be a catalyst for your mastery, not only of jujitsu, but of the art of living with presence, courage, and fluidity. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Now, take a deep breath and let's dive into the fascinating waters of flow jujitsu. Yours sincerely, Elio Damiani Jr. Introduction Welcome to the journey of flow jujitsu, a path that transcends the martial art to become a transformative philosophy of life. If you're holding this book, Chances are you're a BJJ practitioner, looking to hone your art, elevate your game, and perhaps without even knowing it, seeking something even deeper. In the following pages, you'll discover how the principles of flow can revolutionize not only the way you train, but also how you think, feel, and live. We'll start by exploring the tangible benefits of flow jujitsu on the mat how to cultivate the flow state, develop a growth mindset, optimize your learning, and unlock your athletic potential. But flow jujitsu is much more than a training strategy. As you delve deeper into the practice, you'll realize that the principles that make your jujitsu fluid, efficient, and beautiful are the same ones that can transform your life outside of the dojo. Gradually, we will reveal flow jujitsu as a path of deep self-knowledge, exploring themes such as presence, acceptance, letting go of the ego, and finding harmony in the midst of adversity. 
you will discover how the practice of the flow roll is not only a tool to improve your technique, but also a mirror that reflects your inner state and a moving meditation that can free you from limiting mental patterns. Interweaving timeless wisdom from traditions such as Buddhism and Taoism, with practical insights from modern psychology and vivid examples from the BJJ journey, this book is a guide to living more consciously, authentically, and freely. Whether you're a white belt just starting out or a seasoned black belt, the principles of flow jiu-jitsu have the power to elevate not only your game, but your life as a whole. So open your mind and your heart and join us in this exploration of flow jiu-jitsu. For the mat is not only a place to train, but also a laboratory for personal transformation and a sanctuary for self-realization. Chapter 1. Fundamentals of Flow Jiu-Jitsu What is flow state? Imagine yourself in a jiu-jitsu role, sparring session. Your body moves fluidly and precisely, reacting instinctively to your partner's movements. Your mind is calm and focused, totally absorbed in the present moment. Time seems to disappear. There's only you, your opponent, and the dance of combat. Your actions arise spontaneously, guided by a wisdom that transcends conscious thought. This, my friend, is the flow state. This phenomenon, widely studied by psychologist Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, is defined as a state of consciousness in which a person is totally immersed in the activity they are performing. In flow, body and mind operate in perfect synergy, producing a sense of clarity, control, and deep contentment. In the context of jiu-jitsu, Entering the flow means accessing your highest technical, physical, and mental potential. In this state, movements flow naturally, without the interference of doubts or hesitations. It's as if your entire being is connected to the essence of the art, expressed through you. A dedicated jiu-jitsu practitioner describes their experience of flow like this. When I enter the flow during a roll, it's as if my body knows exactly what to do before my mind even has time to process. The techniques I've trained exhaustively emerge at the right time, in the right way. It's a sense of clarity and power that's hard to describe, but unmistakable when you feel it. The flow state therefore represents the union of body, mind, and spirit in the expression of jujitsu. It's the key to unlocking your fullest potential, transcending the boundaries that normally hold us back. And the most incredible thing, this exceptional state of consciousness is not unique to elite athletes. It is within the reach of any practitioner willing to cultivate it. The benefits of flow on the mat. When a jujitsu practitioner enters the flow state, they access a level of performance that transcends their usual limitations. Freed from the shackles of the analytical mind, the student can absorb new techniques with surprising speed and naturalness. In flow, learning becomes almost osmotic. Instead of striving to memorize sequences of movements, the practitioner simply allows their body to assimilate the essence of each technique. It is as if, in this altered state of consciousness, a direct channel opens up between instruction and execution, tremendously accelerating the learning curve. But the benefits of flow aren't limited to the speed of absorption. When we flow with the energy of the moment, we are also flooded by a wave of creativity. New combinations, counters, and submissions sprout spontaneously, as if coming from a wellspring of wisdom far beyond our conscious repertoire. The art of jujitsu renews itself at every instant, and the practitioner becomes a co-creator in this organic process. Of course, this increase in learning speed and creativity translates directly into an overall elevation of performance on the mat. In the flow state, reaction and action merge into a fluid, precise continuum. The timing of submissions becomes refined, sensitivity to the nuances of the fight expands, and the practitioner manifests a looser, more adaptive, and more efficient game. Reports like this are commonplace. Since I started cultivating the flow state in my training routine, it's like my game has jumped to a new level. I feel like I learn faster, improvise more easily, and stay calm even under pressure. It's like I access an enhanced version of myself 
every time I enter that state. What makes flow so powerful in the context of jujitsu is that it allows us to transcend the mental blocks that so often limit us. The fear of failure, the anxiety of competition, the fixation on applying the perfect technique. All of these obstacles dissolve when we immerse ourselves in the flow of the present moment. Thus, flow reveals itself not only as a driver of learning and performance, but as a true portal for personal evolution. It teaches us to trust in the wisdom inherent in our bodies, to embrace the uncertain with courage and lightness, and to find freedom and complete surrender to the now. Cultivating Flow, the Flow Role So far we've seen how profoundly the flow state can transform our jujitsu experience. But how can we reliably access this state? What are the conditions that allow for the emergence of flow? One of the most powerful ways to do this is through the practice of the flow role. The flow role is a type of sparring where the primary goal is not victory, but total immersion in the experience of rolling. In this modality, partners let go of competitiveness and the use of brute force, focusing instead on fluidity, sensitivity, and the harmonious exchange of techniques. During a flow roll, practitioners seek to move with the naturalness of a river, responding organically to each other's actions. Each movement arises as a continuation of the previous one, in a continuous flow of action and reaction. The fight transforms into a dance, a bodily dialogue where each partner contributes to the creation of an integrated experience. In this state of deep connection, the conditions for flow naturally emerge. Free from the pressure of the ego and the need to prove something, practitioners can completely surrender to the present moment. The analytical mind gives way to the instinctive wisdom of the body, and jujitsu reveals itself in its purest and most spontaneous form. But the flow role isn't just an invitation to the flow state. It's also a powerful training ground for cultivating the skills that sustain the state. Through this practice, we develop a greater sensitivity to the nuances of combat, a deeper connection with our bodies, and an expanded capacity to adapt fluidly to changes in the environment. Throughout this book, we will explore in detail how to incorporate the flow role into your training routine, as well as the many lessons this practice has to offer us. For now, just remember that by embracing the spirit of the flow role, you are planting the seeds for a profound transformation not only in your jujitsu, but in your way of relating to life as a whole. Prepare yourself for a journey of discovery where the boundaries between the mat and life dissolve, and each training session becomes an opportunity to dive into the depths of your unexplored potential. The flow roll is your portal to this unprecedented adventure. Opening the doors to mastery. Throughout this chapter, We've explored the fundamentals of the flow state and discovered how it can radically transform our experience on the mat. We've seen that by cultivating the conditions for the emergence of flow, we can accelerate our learning, unlock our creativity, and elevate our performance to extraordinary levels. But the benefits of mastering the art of flow are not limited to our progress in jujitsu. The qualities we develop through this practice presence, adaptability, surrender, have the power to permeate all aspects of our lives. As we become more fluid on the mat, we also become more fluid in how we navigate challenges and opportunities outside of it. We begin to face uncertainty with more lightness, to find balance amidst chaos, and to dance with the inevitable changes of life. This doesn't mean the journey is easy. Mastering flow requires consistent practice, openness to learning from stumbles, and a willingness to always transcend our comfort zone. But as we persist, something profound begins to shift, not only in our art, but in our very being. Prepare yourself for a journey of discovery, challenge, and expansion of the limits of what you thought was possible. By embracing the art of flow, you will awaken to a fluid creative jujitsu aligned with your authentic nature. Get ready to express the full uniqueness of your being through this art. Now that we've established the foundations of flow, in the next chapter we will explore the conditions necessary to access it and concrete practices to cultivate it. 
we will delve into the details of how to prepare body, mind, and spirit to establish this optimized state while we train. Take a deep breath, let go of expectations, and allow yourself to flow. The rewards that await you are far greater than you can imagine. Chapter 2, Preparing to Flow In Chapter 1, we explored the fundamentals of the flow state and its relevance to development in jiu-jitsu. We saw that flow represents an experience of total immersion and perfect synchrony between body and mind, allowing us to access our maximum potential on the mat. We also understand the intrinsic relationship between flow and the essence of jiu-jitsu, an art that demands presence, adaptability, and surrender to the present moment. Flow connects us to the heart of this transformative practice. Now, in this chapter, our goal is to take it a step further. We go beyond theory and dive into practical application. We'll explore the specific conditions that lead to the emergence of flow in jiu-jitsu and learn concrete strategies to incorporate them into our training. Throughout this chapter, you'll discover how to tune your mind, body, and spirit to create the ideal internal environment for flow to flourish. You will also learn to recognize and overcome the mental obstacles that prevent you from reaching your highest states of performance and well-being. This chapter is an invitation to a journey of deep self-knowledge through flow jujitsu. With the right tools, you'll be able to access not only a new level of skill, but a new perception of yourself and the world around you. So take a deep breath, center your attention, and allow yourself to flow through the following pages. You are about to brave a territory of endless possibilities, where the limits of your potential will be expanded with every breath. Understanding the essence of flow. Now, to intentionally cultivate the state of flow in our jujitsu practice, it is essential to first deeply understand its nature. The concept of flow was introduced to psychology by researcher Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, who has dedicated his career to the study of optimal states of human experience. Csikszentmihalyi defines flow as an altered state of consciousness in which we are so completely immersed in one activity that everything else seems to disappear. It is an experience of total involvement, where body and mind operate in perfect harmony, transcending the usual limits of performance. Some distinguishing features of flow state include intense focus. In flow, all attention is directed to the present moment and the task at hand. External distractions and mental wanderings dissipate, generating crystalline clarity. Union of action and awareness. There is a sense of fusion between what you are doing and what you are thinking. Movements flow naturally without deliberate effort as a spontaneous extension of your being. Loss of self-consciousness. In flow, preoccupation with the ego dissolves. You become one with the activity, transcending the duality of subject and object. There is no room for self-criticism or fear of others' evaluation. Sense of control. A sense of mastery over the situation emerges even in the face of great challenges. Your skills are perfectly matched with the demands generating a serene confidence in your abilities. Distortion of temporal perception. In flow, time seems to distort. Hours can pass like minutes, or an instant can stretch indefinitely. Chronological time gives way to a subjective time, dictated by the rhythm of the experience. The flow state can emerge in various activities as long as they involve a dynamic balance between challenge and skill clear goals, and immediate feedback. In jiu-jitsu, flow represents the pinnacle of integration between technique, strategy, and body awareness. It is the point where the practitioner transcends thought and becomes fluid, intuitive action on the mat. With this understanding of the essence of flow, we are ready to explore the specific conditions that foster its flourishing in jiu-jitsu. In the following sections, we will learn concrete strategies to access this peak state with absorbed in the process. Stumbles become springboards for growth. 
Each setback is embraced as valuable feedback, a chance to refine technique and strengthen spirit. Defeat loses its sting, transforming into a patient teacher. Perhaps the deepest benefit of flow in jiu-jitsu is the exponential increase in enjoyment and fulfillment found in training. When we transcend the ego and fully surrender to the experience, each moment on the mat becomes a celebration. Joy is no longer conditioned on external results, but springs from the very act of authentically expressing oneself through the art. Over time, these transformations transcend the bounds of the dojo and interweave into every aspect of life. The flow jujitsu practitioner becomes a lifelong learner, viewing each challenge as an opportunity for growth. The creativity cultivated on the mat manifests in the artful resolution of everyday problems. Resilience translates into emotional equanimity, and the joy of flow becomes a state of being, independent of circumstances. Thus, through the flow state, jujitsu reveals itself not just as a martial art, but as an art of living. Each class is a lesson in presence, each role a dance of discovery, each fall an invitation to rise with grace. The mat becomes a microcosm of existence and flow our inner compass to navigate its mysteries with lightness and mastery. Conclusion. Throughout this chapter, we embarked on a journey to unravel the mysteries of the flow state and its transformative impact on jujitsu practice. Recapping our discoveries, we saw that flow is an altered state of consciousness characterized by total immersion, enhanced performance, and profound satisfaction. We explored the essential conditions for cultivating flow on the mat, from balancing challenge and skill to fully focusing on the present moment. Through practical exercises like calibrating goals, refining kinesthetic feedback, and using anchors for presence, the practitioner can actively invite flow into their martial journey. However, the path to flow is not without obstacles. Anxiety, overthinking, attachment to ego, and stagnation in the comfort zone can all block access to this state of flow. By recognizing these challenges and applying specific strategies to transcend them, we open the doors to deeper and more consistent flow experiences. The rewards of embodying flow in jujitsu practice are vast and profound. From accelerated learning to increased creativity, from enhanced resilience to increased enjoyment, flow is a catalyst for evolution on all levels. More than a tool for athletic performance, Flow reveals itself as a guide for personal transformation, radiating its benefits far beyond the mat. By living the principles of flow jujitsu, the practitioner becomes an artist of life, shaping their existence with presence, grace, and authenticity. As we conclude this chapter, I invite you, dear reader, to personally experiment with the exercises and concepts presented here. Be gentle with yourself in this exploration, remembering that the path to mastering flow is a journey of patience, practice, and discovery. In the next chapter, we will deepen our investigation, examining how the flow state can be nurtured and sustained by creating an optimal training environment. Prepare to dive into the subtle elements that transform a dojo from a mere physical space into a sanctuary for growth and awakening. Until then, may your practice be filled with presence, your mind open to the magic of the moment, and your heart courageous to embrace the unknown. After all, it is in the arms of mystery that true mastery resides. Chapter three, cultivating the flow state on the mat. In the previous chapters, we dove into the fundamentals of flow jujitsu exploring the essential principles that underpin this transformative approach to the gentle art. Now it's time to bring these concepts into practice, focusing specifically on how to cultivate the flow state during our training on the mat. The flow state, as we've seen, is characterized by total immersion in the present activity, where body and mind attune in perfect harmony. In this state, our movements flow with grace and precision. Our reflexes sharpen, and our awareness expands, transcending the limitations of the ego. In the context of jujitsu, 
Flow represents the pinnacle of technical and artistic expression. It's in this state that we free ourselves from mechanical rigidity and allow ourselves to dance fluidly to the rhythm of our partner's resistance. It's where the fight becomes a creative play, a celebration of the connection between two human beings engaged in a dynamic bodily dialogue. But how can we consistently invoke this state during our training? What are the necessary conditions for flow to emerge and sustain itself in the heat of the role? And how can we overcome the mental and emotional obstacles that often pull us away from this state of grace? In this chapter, we'll explore these questions in depth. We'll combine insights from flow research with the practical wisdom of the mat, weaving a tapestry of strategies for you to cultivate this optimized state in your martial journey. Prepare yourself for a transformative immersion. Over the next pages, you'll discover how to attune your mind, body, and spirit to surf the waves of flow in jiu-jitsu. You'll learn to create the internal and external conditions for magic to happen, navigating masterfully between technique and spontaneity, structure and improvisation, control and surrender. The origin of the concept. The concept of flow was originally introduced by Hungarian-American psychologist Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi in the 1970s. Through extensive research and interviews with hundreds of individuals from different fields, from artists and athletes to scientists and musicians, Csikszentmihalyi sought to understand the states of optimal human experience. He observed that, regardless of the activity, culture, or socioeconomic background, people described very similar experiences when they were totally immersed in what they were doing. In these moments, individuals reported a sense of complete absorption and focus, where the concerns and distractions of everyday life disappeared. Csikszentmihalyi coined the term flow to capture this highly focused and rewarding mental state. He defined it as an experience of complete immersion in an activity where our skills are in balance with the challenges faced. In this state, our consciousness merges with our actions leading to a sense of spontaneity and control. Csikszentmihalyi's research also revealed certain conditions that tend to facilitate the flow state, such as having clear goals, receiving immediate feedback, and feeling that we have the necessary skills to meet the challenges at hand. When these conditions are present, we become fully absorbed in the present moment, and our performance tends to reach extraordinary levels. Since its introduction, the concept of flow has been widely studied and applied in various fields, from sports psychology to game design and learning strategies. In the context of jiu-jitsu, understanding the origins and characteristics of flow gives us a solid foundation to intentionally cultivate this state in our practice, enhancing not only our performance on the mat, but also our satisfaction and personal growth through the art flow and oriental wisdom. Although the term flow has been recently coined in Western psychology, the state it describes finds profound parallels in the traditions of the East, particularly in Zen Buddhism and Taoism. In Zen, the notion of mushin, or no mind, refers to a state of total absorption in the present activity, free from the interference of thoughts and ego. It is a condition of pure spontaneity and receptivity where the practitioner acts in perfect harmony with the moment. This conception strongly resonates with the experience of flow, where we feel totally immersed in what we are doing, transcending limiting self-consciousness. Similarly, Taoism emphasizes the principle of Wu Wei, often translated as effortless action or non-action. This concept does not literally mean doing nothing, but rather acting in alignment with the natural flow of things, without forcing or resisting. When we are in a state of flow, our action becomes fluid and frictionless, emerging organically in response to the demands of the situation. In the context of martial arts, we can see these principles manifest in the pursuit of spontaneity and fluidity of movement. The skilled practitioner is not simply executing memorized techniques, but allowing their body to respond intuitively without the interference of excessive mental control. It is a state of presence and openness that allows for the natural flow of combat. By exploring the connections between flow and oriental wisdom, 
we realize that the cultivation of the state is not merely a means of optimizing performance, but a path of personal and spiritual development. Through total immersion in the present moment, the jujitsu practitioner can experience a sense of unity and transcendence, dissolving the barriers between self, partner, and environment. And grounding our understanding of flow in these ancient traditions not only enriches our practice, but also situates it in a broader context of cultivating awareness and harmonizing with the natural rhythms of life. On the mat, as an existence, flow represents a state of profound alignment and unleashing of human potential. The neuroscience of flow. In recent decades, advances in neuroscience have allowed us to understand more deeply the biological underpinnings of the flow state. Through brain imaging techniques and studies of neurotransmitters, researchers are unveiling the neural mechanisms behind this experience of total immersion. One of the most consistent findings is that during flow, different regions of the brain enter a state of synchrony or coherence. In particular, there is a decrease in activity in the prefrontal cortex, the area associated with self-consciousness, judgment, and critical analysis. This partial deactivation allows higher cognitive functions to give way to a more spontaneous and intuitive mode of operation. Simultaneously, there is an increase in activity in areas such as the anterior cingulate cortex and the insula, involved in focused attention and processing of interoceptive information, internal bodily sensations. This shift in the pattern of neural activity suggests a greater integration of mind and body during flow, with the individual highly attuned to their actions and environment. Moreover, flow is associated with the release of a number of neurotransmitters, including dopamine, norepinephrine, and endorphins. Dopamine, in particular, plays a crucial role in motivation, learning, and the sensation of reward. Elevated levels of dopamine during flow may account for the inherent sense of pleasure and satisfaction in this state. Another fascinating aspect is the impact of flow on neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to form new connections and reshape itself in response to experiences. Studies suggest that when we learn or practice a skill in a flow state, the brain is especially receptive to structural changes. Lessons are encoded more deeply and enduringly at both a neural and muscular level. In the context of jujitsu, these neurological findings offer valuable insights. They help us understand why flow is so conducive to accelerated learning and overcoming plateaus. When we are fully immersed in practice, free from judgment and distraction, our brain is optimally primed to absorb and integrate new information and movement patterns. At the same time, the neuroscience of flow reminds us of the importance of cultivating a receptive, engaged state of mind. Through practices like mindfulness, breathwork, and visualization, we can intentionally facilitate the neural conditions for flow thereby enhancing our evolution on the mat. Armed with this understanding, we can approach our practice not merely as physical training, but as an opportunity to sculpt our brain for growth and mastery. Each training session becomes an invocation of neuroplasticity, an invitation to transcend our perceived limitations and expand into new possibilities. Cultivating the conditions for flow on the mat. Now that we understand the conceptual and neuroscientific underpinnings of flow, let's explore how we can intentionally create the conditions to access this state during our jujitsu practice. Balance between challenge and skill. One of the keys to entering flow is finding the sweet spot where the level of challenge is high enough to fully engage us, but not so high as to overwhelm us. This means choosing partners and situations that push us beyond our comfort zone, but are still within our ability to handle. We can do this progressively, increasing complexity as our skills evolve. Being a good training partner is crucial. If you are physically or technically superior to your training companion, learn to put yourself in situations or create constraints where you help your partner and yourself find the balance between challenge and skill. 
clear goals, and immediate feedback. Flow is facilitated when we have a clear goal in mind and can immediately perceive the results of our actions. In the context of jujitsu, this could mean working on a specific technique or concept during a session and paying attention to how our body and our partner respond to each movement. By maintaining a specific focus and being open to constant feedback, we create a cycle of action and adaptation that can lead us into a flow state. Remember that goals are to guide your focus. Don't force to reach your goal, but rather notice paths that will lead you to your objective, presence and immersion in the moment. Perhaps the most important factor for accessing flow is the ability to be fully present and immersed in the activity at hand. On the mat, this means letting go of external distractions and worries and focusing completely on the dynamic interaction with our partner. Breathing techniques, meditation, and mindfulness can be powerful tools for cultivating this quality of presence, allowing us to surrender fully to the flow of the fight, trust and detachment from ego. Finally, entering flow requires a sense of trust in our abilities and a detachment from ego concerns. When we are preoccupied with proving something or avoiding losing, we create a mental barrier to flow. Instead, we need to adopt an attitude of curiosity and acceptance, being willing to explore the unknown and embrace inevitable difficulties as learning opportunities. With time and practice, we can develop a deep faith in our growth potential, allowing us to surrender completely to the experience. By understanding and cultivating these conditions in our practice, we vastly increase our ability to not only experience flow, but to make it a consistent state. And as our familiarity with flow grows, we can begin to expand this quality of presence and immersion into other areas of our lives, transforming not just our performance on the mat, but our day-to-day -day experience as a whole. Preparing the mind and body for flow. Cultivating the flow state in jiu-jitsu requires not only a conceptual understanding, but also an active preparation of our body and mind. In this section, we will explore some practices and rituals that can help us create the ideal internal conditions to dive into this elevated state of consciousness on the mat. Creating a conducive environment. Our external environment can have a significant impact on our ability to access flow. We should therefore seek to create a training space that is organized, clean, and free from unnecessary distractions. This may involve arranging the mat in a way that facilitates focus, adjusting lighting and temperature to comfortable levels, and perhaps even using music or ambient sounds to induce a receptive mental state. Equally important is our internal environment, the space of our own mind. Before stepping onto the mat, we can intentionally cultivate a state of presence, clarity, and openness. Practices like meditation, conscious breathing, and visualization can be powerful allies in this process, helping us quiet the mental noise and tune into the present moment. Conscious physical warm-up. Physical warm-up is an essential part of any jujitsu practice, but it is often done mechanically or half-heartedly. However, if we approach the warm-up with full consciousness, it can become a powerful ritual to invoke the flow state. When performing each warm-up movement, seek to be fully present in the sensations of the body. Notice the stretching and contracting of muscles, the flow of breath, the contact of feet with the mat. Allow this fine-tuned body awareness to anchor you in the here and now, dissipating past or future concerns. You can also use the warm-up as an opportunity to set a clear intention for your practice. As you move your body, visualize yourself executing techniques with fluidity and precision, or experiencing qualities like calmness, agility, and connection. These positive intentions can serve as a beacon guiding you toward the flow state. Establishing pre-training rituals. Rituals have a unique power to transport us into an altered state of mind. By creating and consistently practicing a pre-training ritual, 
we are essentially training our minds to enter flow mode on demand. Your ritual can be simple, like doing a brief seated meditation, visualizing a successful training session, or repeating a mantra or affirmation that invokes the desired state. The key point is to perform the ritual with presence and intention, allowing it to serve as a bridge between the everyday world and the elevated realm of flow. With time and repetition, these rituals become anchored triggers, cues to our body and mind that it's time to set aside distractions and fully immerse in the present moment. They become reliable portals that enable us to access our best on the mat, regardless of external circumstances. So whether we are setting up our training space, tuning our body awareness, or invoking elevated mental states, preparation for flow is an active and intentional process. With practice, these strategies become second nature, effortlessly weaving into our jujitsu routine and paving the way for ever deeper experiences of immersion and mastery, navigating obstacles to flow. Even with the best intentions and preparation, the path to flow is rarely smooth. Throughout our journey, we will inevitably encounter obstacles, both external and internal, that can divert us from this ideal state. In this section, we will examine some of the most common challenges and explore strategies for overcoming them with grace and resilience. Dealing with frustration and ego. One of the biggest obstacles to flow in jujitsu is the ego. That part of us that is constantly concerned with proving something, with winning or avoiding defeat, when we become attached to specific outcomes or compare ourselves to others, we create a mental tension that blocks flow. The key here is to develop a new relationship with frustration and failure. Instead of seeing them as threats to our self-worth, we can view them as precious opportunities for learning and growth. Each time our ego is challenged on the mat, we have a chance to practice detachment, humility, and acceptance. A helpful strategy is to cultivate an attitude of curiosity in the face of difficulty. When we catch ourselves getting frustrated or defensive, we can pause, breathe, and ask with genuine interest, what does this situation have to teach me? This shift in perspective can transform an obstacle into a portal for deeper insight, transcending the comfort zone. Another common challenge is comfort with the familiar. Often, especially as we advance in our practice, we may find ourselves gravitating toward techniques or styles we feel confident in. While this comfort zone may make us feel in control, it can also become a prison, limiting our potential for growth and adaptation. The antidote here is to intentionally embrace the unknown. This means regularly seeking out new experiences on the mat, training with different partners, exploring unfamiliar positions, testing creative approaches. By continually expanding our boundaries, we keep alive the sense of discovery and challenge that fuels the flow state. Of course, stepping out of the comfort zone can be uncomfortable, but it is in this space of uncertainty that the real magic happens. By allowing ourselves to be beginners again, we open the doors to quantum leaps in learning and adaptability, essential qualities for sustaining flow over the long term, finding fluidity in adversity. Lastly, a persistent obstacle to flow is perceived adversity, those times when we feel overwhelmed, tired, or unmotivated. In these moments, the state of total immersion can seem like a distant mirage. Yet, it is precisely in these times that the principles of flow become most valuable. Rather than resisting or retreating from adversity, we can choose to find fluidity within it. This means tuning even more deeply into the present moment, trusting our training and instincts, and finding enjoyment in the challenges. A powerful tactic is to rekindle our sense of purpose, remembering why we started this journey, connecting with our passion for the art, can transform an ordeal into an adventure. With practice, we can learn to ride the waves of adversity, using its energy to propel us to new heights. Facing obstacles, whether internal or external, is an inevitable and even necessary part of the flow path. Each challenge is an opportunity in disguise to deepen our practice, refine our character, 
and expand our conception of what is possible. By navigating these obstacles with awareness and intention, we not only cultivate our capacity to access flow, but we also become more skilled, resilient, and evolved martial artists. Cultivating the beginner's mind in our journey to mastering the art of flow in jiu-jitsu. One of the greatest allies we can have is the mind of a beginner. No matter how many years of practice we have under our belts or how many colored stripes adorn our waist, maintaining an attitude of openness, curiosity, and humility is essential for continued learning and growth, the trap of expertise. As we progress in our practice, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking we already know all there is to know. Our ego becomes attached to the identity of expert, causing us to close off to new possibilities and insights. This kind of mental rigidity is kryptonite to the flow state, which thrives on flexibility and adaptability. The beginner's mind, on the other hand, is always ready to be surprised. It approaches each situation with freshness and receptivity without clinging to preconceived notions. With this openness, we are able to notice nuances and opportunities that would otherwise go unperceived. The art of unlearning. Cultivating the beginner's mind often requires the courage to unlearn what we already know. This means letting go of familiar patterns, dependent techniques, and habitual ways of thinking. It can be uncomfortable at first, but this willingness to abandon the known is essential for growth. On the mat, we can intentionally practice not knowing. When rolling with a partner, we can ask ourselves, what if I approach this situation as if it were the first time? What new possibilities would arise? By cultivating this playful curiosity, we keep the spark of discovery alive, embracing impermanence. At the heart of the beginner's mind is a deep recognition of the ever-changing nature of reality. In jiu-jitsu, as in life, nothing stays the same for long. Techniques evolve, bodies adapt, and challenges appear in new forms. By embracing impermanence, we become more agile and responsive in the face of uncertainty. Rather than rigidly clinging to specific strategies or outcomes, we learn to dance with what arises in the moment. This fluid acceptance is a key component in sustaining the flow state. Of course, the beginner's mind is not something we master once and for all. It's an ongoing practice a mental muscle we strengthen each time we step on the mat. With time and repetition, this state of openness and receptivity becomes more natural, permeating not just our jujitsu, but all aspects of our lives. In this chapter, we've explored the transformative power of the beginner's mind in cultivating the flow state. By embracing curiosity and permanence and the art of unlearning, we become perpetual students, not just of jujitsu, but of the vast and intriguing school of life. With this humility and openness, we unlock new realms of possibility, both on and off the mat. The transformative power of consistent practice. At the heart of cultivating flow in jiu-jitsu is the commitment to consistent practice. It is through intentional repetition that we integrate the principles of flow on a deep level, transmuting them from intellectual concepts into lived realities. Developing mastery through repetition. Mastery in any discipline is not a singular event, but rather the accumulation of countless deliberate actions. Each time we step on the mat with a clear intention, we're depositing one more layer of skill and understanding into our being. The key here is the quality of practice. It's not just about putting in the hours, but bringing to them full presence and a spirit of inquiry. Each flow roll becomes an opportunity to refine fundamentals, test new strategies, and expand the boundaries of what's possible. Over time, this dedicated practice creates profound changes in our bodies and minds. Techniques that once felt clumsy become second nature. The ability to flow with change becomes an instinctive reflex. Confidence deepens born of proven competence, paving the way for flow. More than just honing specific skills, consistent practice also creates the ideal conditions for experiencing the flow state more frequently and deeply. As we familiarize ourselves with the rhythms and demands of our art, 
our mind begins to relax its grip on control. With less space taken up by doubt and hesitation, we become more available to lose ourselves completely in the moment. Furthermore, through repeated exposure to the challenges of jujitsu, we gradually expand our comfort zone. What once seemed impossible becomes just another puzzle to calmly and creatively solve. With this expanded capacity, our potential for accessing flow expands as well. Embracing the process. Perhaps the most transformative insight that consistent practice offers is an appreciation for the process itself. As we engage day after day in the discipline of jujitsu, we begin to find joy and fulfillment, not just in moments of advancement, but in the entire journey of growth. We learn to value defeats as much as triumphs, recognizing that every challenge is a disguised opportunity to refine ourselves. We develop a more peaceful relationship with frustration, understanding it as a natural companion to any pursuit worth undertaking. With this shift in perspective, the flow state becomes less of a goal to chase and more of a natural way of being. We find a measure of freedom and joy in the simple act of giving ourselves fully to what we love. Thus, consistent practice is far more than a means to an end. It's a path of transformation in its own right. By committing to the loving discipline of jujitsu, we subtly reshape our bodies, minds, and hearts, becoming more attuned to the flow of life on and off the mat. It's a gift we give ourselves each time we tie our belt and step onto the mat. Flow jujitsu as a path of self-knowledge. As we delve deeper into our exploration of flow jujitsu, it becomes increasingly clear that this practice is much more than a mere technical approach to the gentle art. At its core, flow jujitsu is a path of self-discovery, offering profound lessons that resonate beyond the boundaries of the mat. Mirroring our internal patterns. One of the most powerful facets of flow jujitsu is its ability to reflect our mental and emotional states. During a flow role, our internal blockages and limitations manifest in tangible ways through hesitations, rigidity, or overreactions. In this sense, the practice becomes a mirror, allowing us to see clearly the areas where we need to work. Perhaps we notice a tendency to give up when things get challenging or a reluctance to step out of our comfort zone. By bringing these tendencies into the light of awareness, we gain the opportunity to address them with compassion and intention. Cultivating presence and equanimity. At the heart of flow, jujitsu is the ability to remain completely present, responding to the moment with lucidity and precision. This unwavering presence echoes the Buddhist teachings of staying rooted in the now, meeting each situation with a mind unburdened by past conditioning. Through consistent practice, we cultivate an ever greater equanimity, the capacity to maintain an internal stability amidst the undulations of life. We learn to embrace both success and failure, comfort and discomfort, with an even mind. This skill transfers to all aspects of our lives, allowing us to navigate the ups and downs with grace and resilience, unraveling deeper patterns. At an even deeper level, Flow Jiu-Jitsu invites us to examine the roots of our blockages and limitations. As we engage in the process of problem solving on the mat, we begin to recognize the recurring patterns that keep us stuck. Maybe we notice a tendency to fall into the trap of frustration when things don't go as planned, or a hesitation to trust our instincts in crucial moments. By bringing a loving awareness to these patterns, we begin to unravel the deeper layers of conditioning that shape our experience. With time and dedicated practice, these revelations give way to greater freedom and spontaneity, both on the mat and in life. We become increasingly skillful at recognizing our triggers, interrupting counterproductive patterns and choosing more skillful responses. In this process, we become not just better martial artists, but more integrated and awakened human beings. The ongoing journey. Of course, the path of self-knowledge through flow jujitsu is not an all or nothing proposition. It's a gradual unfoldment, 
a journey of revelation and integration. Each time we step onto the mat with a beginner's mind, we open ourselves to a new layer of learning about ourselves and the art we love. And perhaps that's the greatest gift flow jiu-jitsu has to offer, the chance to engage in a process of self-discovery that is as challenging as it is rewarding. By fully embracing this journey, we not only refine our jiu-jitsu skills, but also awaken to the vast potential that resides within us, waiting to be known and manifested. The mat becomes a playground for personal transformation, and each training session, a step towards a more skillful, compassionate, and awakened version of ourselves. Flow Jiu-Jitsu and the Buddhist Path as we delve deeper into our exploration of flow jiu-jitsu as a vehicle for self-knowledge and personal transformation, fascinating parallels with Buddhist teachings begin to emerge. Though rooted in different contexts, these two philosophies share fundamental principles that echo universal truths about the nature of the mind, growth, and liberation, full presence, and the power of now. At the core of both flow jiu-jitsu and Buddhist practice is the cultivation of full presence, the ability to completely inhabit the present moment, free from the shackles of past conditioning or anxieties about the future. On the mat, this presence manifests as a total immersion in the dynamic dance of combat, spontaneously responding to each movement with lucidity and precision. This state of unwavering attentiveness reflects the Buddhist teaching of staying rooted in the now, meeting each situation with a fresh mind unencumbered by preconceptions. Through consistent practice, both the martial artist and the Buddhist practitioner cultivate an ever greater capacity to embrace the present moment, unlocking reserves of clarity, creativity, and wisdom that reside beyond the reach of discursive thought. Confronting the Roots of Suffering Another remarkable point of convergence between flow jiu-jitsu and Buddhism is the recognition that the roots of our suffering and limitations ultimately reside within ourselves. On the mat, our fears, attachments, and reactive patterns manifest in tangible ways, creating hesitation, rigidity, or desperation in crucial moments. Similarly, Buddhist teachings locate the source of our dissatisfaction in conditioned mental states such as ignorance, attachment, and aversion. Through introspective practice, we are invited to face these tendencies with honesty and compassion, unraveling layers of conditioning to reveal a deeper freedom. In both flow jiu-jitsu and the Buddhist path, this process of self-confrontation is facilitated by careful attention to the subtle movements of mind and body. We learn to recognize the signs of stress and contraction, using them as invitations to relax into a more tranquil awareness. Over time, this practice progressively liberates us from the patterns that constrain us, revealing a more fluid and harmonious way of being. Transformation through embodied practice. Perhaps the deepest parallel between these two traditions is the commitment to embodied practice as a vehicle for transformation. In both flow jiu-jitsu and Buddhism, the most profound insights are not merely understood conceptually, but lived and integrated through diligent, sustained action. On the mat, we refine our being through countless repetitions, forging body and mind in the heat of combat. Each training becomes an opportunity to test our understanding facing the resistances that arise, and discovering new possibilities for skillful response. Similarly, the Buddhist path emphasizes meditation and ethical conduct as the foundations of an awakened life. Through consistent practice, we gradually align our thoughts, words, and actions with our deepest understanding, closing the gap between insight and action. In both disciplines, there are no shortcuts to mastery, only patient, loving engagement with the process of unfolding. And yet, it is precisely through this unwavering commitment that we open ourselves to the possibility of genuine, enduring transformation.
Different paths, one mountain. While the similarities between flow jiu-jitsu and Buddhism are striking, it's important to recognize that they remain distinct paths, each with their own nuances, methods, and areas of emphasis. Buddhism is, first and foremost, a comprehensive spiritual path, dealing with questions of existence, suffering, and ultimate liberation. Flow jiu-jitsu, while deeply transformative, is fundamentally a martial discipline concerned with cultivating a fluid awareness within the specific context of combat. However, as the Zen saying reminds us, there are many paths to the top of the mountain. Though flow jiu-jitsu and Buddhism may differ in form and flavor, they are united by a shared impulse toward awakening, a longing to transcend the limitations of a contracted sense of self and rediscover the inherent freedom that is our birthright. In this sense, the practice of flow jiu-jitsu can be seen as a contemporary expression of perennial truths, a way of embodying ancient principles of presence, openness, and fluid spontaneity within the pressurized crucible of combat. By fully embracing this path, we become not only more skilled martial artists, but also open the door to a transformation that resonates through all aspects of our lives. For the committed practitioner, then, Flow Jiu-Jitsu becomes more than a mere pursuit of martial excellence. It becomes a path of self-discovery, a journey back to our most natural state of innate freedom and fluidity. And while the challenges of this path are many, the rewards are beyond measure. An ever-growing sense of peace, presence, and spontaneous joy that radiates both on and off the mat. This perhaps, is the greatest gift that flow jiu-jitsu has to offer. Let's explore a few more common obstacles that block flow. Perfectionism. Many practitioners get hung up on the idea of executing the perfect technique, but this pursuit can end up hindering performance and learning. It's important to embrace the notion that small errors and adjustments are a natural part of the process. Jiu-Jitsu is a living art that evolves with each interaction. Allow yourself to explore, make mistakes, and discover on the mat. Comparison with others. It's tempting to measure our progress by looking at more advanced teammates, but this often breeds frustration and self-judgment. Remember that Jiu-Jitsu is an individual journey. Focus on your own evolution, celebrating each small victory, and learning from each challenge. Your only true competition is with the person you were yesterday. Attachment to outcome. Many of us fall into the trap of fixating on the outcome of specific roles and matches. But this mindset distracts us from the real purpose, to learn, grow, and connect through the art. Cultivate an attitude of curiosity and appreciation every time you step on the mat. Regardless of the final score, you win every time you embrace the opportunity to explore and refine your expression of jiu-jitsu. By recognizing and overcoming these pitfalls, we create space for flow to flourish in our practice. But remember, mastering the art of jiu-jitsu is a process, not a final destination. There will be days when the mind wanders, frustration arises, or the pressure to prove takes over. In those moments, be gentle with yourself. Breathe, release expectations, and bring your attention back to the present. With consistent practice, clear intention, and a playful attitude, you'll gradually find flow with more ease and frequency. That's the beauty of the path. Each obstacle is an opportunity to deepen your surrender. Each fall is a chance to blossom. So move forward with courage, knowing that you have everything you need to awaken your limitless potential. Flow is always there, inviting you to dive into the dance of jiu-jitsu with presence, lightness, and an open mind. Answer that call and discover true freedom at the center of the mat. The stage is set. It's time to flow. Chapter 4. Deepening the Flow Role. Partnership, Presence, and Play. The Transformative Power of the Flow Role. In this chapter, we'll dive into the art of the flow role, a practice that goes beyond technique 
to become a portal to presence, connection, and growth. More than just a training exercise, the flow role is an opportunity to explore the principles of flow jujitsu in action, cultivating a deeper understanding of yourself, your partner, and the art. The essence of partnership in the flow role. At the heart of the flow role is the concept of partnership. Unlike a fight or competition, the goal is not to dominate the other, but rather to create a fluid dance of movement and energy. This requires a level of trust, communication, and attunement that transcends words. And here are some tips for cultivating a deep partnership in the flow role. Set a shared intention. Before you begin, align with your partner on the purpose of the session. This could be exploring a specific position, working on a particular pace, or simply surrendering to the moment. Practice deep listening. In the flow role, listening goes beyond the ears. Be mindful of the subtleties of your partner's body language, pressure, and breathing. This allows for intuitive communication and an ability to respond organically, give and take. A good flow role is a balanced exchange of give and take. Be willing to offer resistance and challenges to your partner, but also be open to receiving the same. This reciprocity creates a sense of balance and connection. Cultivating presence through the flow role. One of the greatest gifts of the flow role is its ability to anchor us in the present moment. When we are fully engaged in the dynamic dance of the flow role, there is no room for mental wandering or external worries. There is only the immediate purity of the interaction. To deepen your presence during the flow role, try anchoring your attention on the breath. Whenever you notice your mind wandering, gently bring your attention back to the rhythm of your breathing. Let it be a continuous reminder to return to the now. Involve all your senses. Jiu-Jitsu is a multi-sensory experience. Pay attention to the touch of the G, the warmth of skin, the sounds of the dojo. Allowing your senses to fully engage helps keep you present. Embrace not knowing. In the flow role, we are constantly confronted with the unexpected. Instead of resisting or trying to control, practice embracing uncertainty. Surrender to the unfolding experience with curiosity and receptivity. Awakening your playful spirit. Perhaps the most joyful aspect of the flow role is its ability to awaken our innate playful spirit. When we fully surrender to the experience, the mat becomes a playground where we can explore, create, and freely express ourselves. To nurture your sense of play during the flow roll, release attachment to outcomes. Remember, the goal isn't to win, but rather to learn and grow. Free yourself from the pressure to achieve a certain result and allow yourself to enjoy the process. Be creative. The flow roll is a blank canvas for your self-expression. Play with new transitions. Try unorthodox combinations. Follow your creative impulses. There's immense joy in being bold and experimental. Celebrate moments of connection. Be attentive to moments of synchronicity with your partner. When your movements perfectly merge, when you laugh together at a shared mistake, these moments of resonance are the true gold of the flow role. Taking the flow role into life, the beauty of the flow role is that its benefits extend far beyond the mat. By cultivating presence, partnership, and playfulness in our jujitsu practice, we are actually training skills that can transform all aspects of our life. So the next time you engage in a flow role, remember, you're not just refining your art, you're enhancing your capacity to connect deeply, attune to the moment, and approach life with a sense of joyful, effortless curiosity. The flow role is, in many ways, a metaphor for life well lived. Embrace this invitation to roll more lightly, be more present, and accept the unfolding of experience. For it's in the depths of flow where the magic happens, both on the mat and beyond. Inspiring stories of flow role partnerships. To illustrate the power of partnership in flow jujitsu, we can share the story of two practitioners who transformed their relationship through the consistent practice of flow rolling. They were two training partners with quite distinct personalities. 
One was extroverted and always ready for a challenge, while the other was more reserved and cautious. In the beginning, their flow roles were tense and disconnected, as if they were speaking different languages. But over time, they began to tune into each other. Before each session, they would set a shared intention, whether it was to explore a specific position or to maintain a certain pace. They started to listen deeply to each other's movements and reactions, adjusting in real time. Gradually, a fluid dance emerged. They would alternate between leading and following, challenging and yielding, always maintaining a sense of mutual respect and support. Off the mat, their friendship blossomed as well, grounded in the trust and understanding cultivated through the flow role. This story reminds us that the most powerful partnerships are built not despite, but through our differences. With openness, patience, and a willingness to meet in the middle, even apparent opposites can become brilliant partners on the path of flow. Exercise, cultivating empathy before the flow role. Before your next flow role, take a moment to truly connect with your partner. Sit facing each other and together, set an intention for the session. It could be something technical like, today we will explore guard passes, or something more subtle like, let's maintain a sense of lightheartedness and play. Next, practice seeing the situation from the other's perspective. Imagine what it might be like to be in your partner's body, mind, and emotions in this moment. What challenges might they be facing? How can you support and uplift them through your interaction? Share a smile or a respectful touch, affirming your commitment to caring for and learning from each other. Carry the sense of connection and mutual understanding onto the mat, allowing it to inform every movement, every exchange. You'll find that with this foundation of empathy, your flow role takes on a new depth. It's no longer about two separate individuals but a synchronous partnership, moving and growing as one art. Beginner's Mind, the key to presence. A powerful concept we can apply to our flow rolling practice is that of beginner's mind. This involves approaching each interaction on the mat with a sense of freshness and openness, as if it were the first time. Often, especially as we advance in our jujitsu journey, we can get stuck in patterns and assumptions. We think we know how a role will unfold based on past experiences. But this mindset can actually distance us from the present moment. Cultivating beginner's mind means letting go of these expectations and allowing yourself to be surprised. It's stepping onto the mat with a sense of curiosity and wonder, ready to discover something new each time. Here are some practical tips for cultivating beginner's mind during the flow role. Before you begin, pause and take a deep breath. Acknowledge and release any expectations or worries. Approach your partner with a sense of genuine curiosity. What can you learn from them today? Now, if you catch yourself anticipating your partner's moves, pause and return to the present moment. Cultivate a sense of awe for the subtleties and nuances of each interaction. Embrace the discoveries. Meditation. Script for deepening presence during the flow roll. Here's a guided exercise you can do before or after your flow roll to deepen your state of presence. Find a quiet place to sit with a straight spine. Have that. Close your eyes and bring your attention to your breath. Notice the natural flow of inhale and exhale. Now, bring to mind a recent image of you and your partner engaged in a flow roll. Observe the dynamics of the movement, the sense of connection. Imagine yourself fully immersed in the present moment, intuitively responding to each micro movement. Visualize yourself letting go of all expectations, judgments, or analysis. You are utterly present. Now expand that sense of presence to fill your entire being. Feel it resonating in your body and mind. Set an anchor, a deeper breath, a gentle hand, squeeze to evoke this presence during the flow roll when you're ready slowly open your eyes carrying this amplified quality of awareness into your practice by practicing beginner's mind and using this meditation exercise you can transform your flow roll into a practice of deep presence 
dissolving the barriers between you, your partner, and the art. The power of play in learning and growth. The act of play is an essential part of our development, not just in childhood, but throughout life. When we play, we allow ourselves to explore, experiment, and discover without the weight of expectations or fear of failure. In the context of jujitsu, the flow role invites us to awaken this innate playful spirit. By approaching practice with a sense of openness and curiosity, we create space for organic learning and accelerated growth. Here are some ways to incorporate more playfulness into your flow roles. Let go of attachment to outcomes. Remember, the goal is not to win or even to execute techniques perfectly. Instead, focus on exploring movement, following your intuition and curiosity. Be creative in your movements. Give yourself permission to try unconventional movements or creative responses. Embrace the element of surprise and see where it leads you. Celebrate moments of synchronicity. When you and your partner find a shared rhythm, a moment of seamless connection, savor that feeling. Let the joy of co-creation shine through. Laugh and smile often. Laughter doesn't just relieve tension and stress. It also helps us take things less seriously. If you catch yourself laughing mid-roll, know that you're on the right track. Playful exercises to revitalize the flow roll. And that, here are some mini games you can bring into your roles to keep things fresh and engaging. The yes and challenge. In this exercise, the goal is always to accept and build on your partner's movement. If they initiate a sweep instead of resisting, go with it and see where it takes you. Keep the energy flowing with a sense of acceptance and building. Inverted function. If you normally take a more dominant role in the roles, do the opposite. Let your partner set the pace and focus solely on following and responding. Or, if you tend to be more passive, take the lead and initiate movements. Playing with different dynamics can lead to new insights. The imitation game. For a few exchanges, consciously mirror your partner's movements and energy. Copy their postural adjustments, their breathing rhythm, their movement patterns. Then, at some point, Take the lead and see if your partner starts mirroring you. This can generate a deep sense of attunement and empathy. Incorporating the spirit of play into your flow roles not only brings more joy and lightness to your practice, but also triggers states of accelerated learning and expands your creative repertoire on the mat and beyond. As you can see, by bringing an element of playfulness to our training, we open up new doors for discovery, connection, and authentic expression. Flow Jiu Jitsu invites us to fully embrace this ludic quality, unleashing our human potential on multiple levels. Just flow, flow roll, flow sparring. Now let's explore the nuances between just flow, flow roll, and flow sparring before we close this chapter. These distinctions can help practitioners better understand the different facets of the flow state in jiu-jitsu and how to apply them according to their goals. Just flow. It is perhaps the purest and most playful expression of the flow state on the mat. Here, the focus is entirely on play, free exploration, and creativity. Partners engage in a spontaneous dance, following their impulses and curiosities without a predetermined objective. Just flow is a celebration of the joy of movement and connection, a reminder not to take training or ourselves too seriously all the time. Just flow, with its emphasis on free play and creativity, reminds us to cultivate a sense of lightness and curiosity in our practice. When we allow ourselves to explore movement without expectations or rigid goals, we open up space for unexpected discoveries and the pure enjoyment of jiu-jitsu. For those who tend to be overly serious or goal-oriented in their training, dedicating time to just flow can be liberating and invigorating. Flow roll. It brings a bit more structure and intentionality to the practice. While still allowing for ample freedom and improvisation, there is a clearer direction whether to explore specific positions, transitions, or principles of the art. 
Partners still avoid rigid strategies but maintain a shared purpose that guides their interaction. The flow role is an opportunity to deepen technical understanding and jujitsu sensitivity in a fluid and responsive context. Flow sparring. It incorporates more strategic and competitive elements, yet without sacrificing the flow state. Here, partners work to apply their jujitsu with a clearer aim of positional progression, submission, or control. However, they strive to do so in a fluid and adaptable manner, creatively responding to each other's game rather than forcing pre-planned solutions. The challenge of flow sparring is to maintain a present and flexible mind, even while working for a tangible edge. Flow sparring, which incorporates more strategic and competitive elements, provides the opportunity to test our skills under pressure while maintaining a state of fluidity. This type of training is especially valuable for those who wish to apply their jujitsu in a more challenging context, whether in competitions or real life situations. Practicing flow sparring teaches us to think and adapt in real time, an invaluable skill both on and off the mat. By distinguishing and practicing these different expressions of flow, practitioners can develop a deeper and more multifaceted understanding of jujitsu. They learn to modulate between different states and intentions, from freer play to more directed application, without losing the essence of the art, which is fluidity. Therefore, I encourage you to explore the full spectrum of flow in your training. Allow yourself to play freely with just flow, deepen your technical understanding with flow roll, and test your skills with flow sparring. By embracing all these facets, you'll develop a richer, more adaptable, and truly yours, jujitsu. Indeed, while the flow role offers an ideal balance between acceptance and directed focus, it's essential for practitioners to also explore the other types of flow training to develop a more complete and adaptable jujitsu. By noticing which of these training formats we struggle with or resist the most, we gain valuable insights into ourselves. Perhaps you find yourself avoiding just flow because you fear looking silly or awkward. Or maybe you hesitate to engage in flow sparring because you doubt your skills under pressure. These struggles point to areas of growth, not only in our jujitsu, but in our lives more broadly. Therefore, I encourage you to embrace the full spectrum of flow practices, not just those that come more naturally. By exploring uncharted territories and facing discomforts, we open up new doors for technical mastery, mental resilience, and self-knowledge. Remember, jujitsu is ultimately a vehicle for personal transformation. And often, it's precisely where we encounter the greatest resistance that the greatest potential for growth resides. Chapter 5 the flow role as a mirror of the mind. Introduction. In the previous chapters, we explored in depth how the flow role can elevate our jujitsu practice, enhancing technical fluency, timing, and the ability to adapt moment to moment. We have seen how this form of training cultivates a deep connection with our partner, with the martial art and with ourselves. However, the benefits of the flow role go far beyond the development of physical skills. This practice also offers a powerful mirror to our mental and emotional landscape. Just as an MRI reveals what is hidden beneath the surface of the body, the flow roll brings to light the subtle dynamics of our mind, our fears, insecurities, and limiting beliefs. In those moments when our flow is interrupted by hesitation or rigidity, we have a unique opportunity to look inward and identify the psychological blocks that are holding us back. Through conscious and reflective practice, we can use these insights to dissolve internal barriers and unleash our full potential, not only as martial artists, but as human beings. In this chapter, we will explore how the flow role can become a powerful tool for self-knowledge and personal transformation. We will investigate the common ways in which our mental limitations manifest on the mat and strategies for overcoming them. Above all, 
we will discover how to embrace the flow role as a path of continuous growth, a practice that invites us to face our shadows, cultivate emotional resilience, and ultimately experience the freedom of a serene mind in harmony with the present moment. So prepare yourself for a journey of self-discovery, where the insights gained on the mat become catalysts for evolution in all spheres of life. Along the way, remember that each hesitation, each moment of discomfort, is an invitation to go beyond your limits, to expand your awareness and become the best version of yourself. The flow role is your guide in this process, a compassionate mirror reflecting both your challenges and your vast potential. The flow role as an MRI of skill. In this section, we'll explore the fascinating analogy between the flow role and magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. Just as an MRI allows doctors to gain a detailed view of the body's internal structures, revealing areas of health and dysfunction, the flow role offers a deep glimpse into the technical and psychological skills of the jujitsu practitioner. On a physical level, the flow role functions as a precision scanner, mapping the quality of movements, body mechanics, timing, and technical fluency. Through this lens, we can identify areas of excellence as well as points that require further refinement or attention. Each smooth transition reveals efficient biomechanical alignment, while hesitations or rigidity may indicate technical gaps to be worked on. It's as if the flow roll gives us a detailed report of our jujitsu's health, pointing out specific opportunities for improvement. But the flow roll goes beyond the physical, penetrating the more subtle layers of the mind and emotions. Here, the MRI analogy deepens. Just as a brain MRI can reveal patterns of neural activity, the flow roll illuminates the dynamics of our mental landscape. Moments of tension or indecision during practice become signals of psychological blockages, fears, or limiting beliefs that are influencing our performance. The flow role brings these internal obstacles to the surface, where they can be recognized, examined, and ultimately released. In this sense, the practice becomes a mirror of our mental and emotional state, reflecting not only our strengths, but also the areas that need healing and growth. It is a powerful tool for self-knowledge, offering immediate feedback and a unique window into the depths of our being, illuminating the path to mastery not only in jujitsu, but in all spheres of life. Identifying psychological blocks through the flow role. We will now investigate how our fears, insecurities, and limiting beliefs manifest during the practice of the flow role. These psychological blocks often present themselves as physical tensions, hesitations, or stiffness in certain movements or situations. For example, a practitioner may feel a tightness in the chest and a tendency to hold their breath when in a vulnerable position under pressure. These physical signs may indicate an underlying fear of being controlled, overwhelmed, or even getting hurt. Similarly, a recurrent hesitation in taking certain positions or initiating particular techniques may reflect a lack of confidence in one's own abilities or a limiting belief about what is possible for oneself. The flow role, with its fluid pace and improvisational nature, tends to bring these patterns to the surface more evidently than in a normal sparring training. The spontaneous nature of the practice does not allow us to hide behind a memorized sequence of movements, thus exposing our instinctive reactions and deeper conditioning. The key here is to cultivate a sharp awareness during practice, to be attentive not only to what is happening on the physical level, but also to the subtleties of our mental and emotional experience. What thoughts or emotions arise in moments of hesitation or tension? What might these blocks be reflecting about our deeper beliefs and perceptions? Bringing an attitude of curiosity and acceptance to these discoveries is crucial. It's not about judging or criticizing oneself, but rather recognizing these patterns as valuable opportunities for growth and transformation. As we develop this awareness, the flow role becomes a living laboratory for identifying and working with our psychological blocks. 
Each moment of hesitation becomes an invitation to look inward, to question the beliefs that limit us, and to embrace a more expansive view of our potential. Using the flow role to overcome mental barriers. The first step is to cultivate an attitude of acceptance and curiosity towards the blocks that arise. Instead of judging them or trying to suppress them, we are invited to welcome them with openness and compassion. This conscious welcoming in itself already begins to dissolve the rigidity of these patterns. From this space of acceptance, we can then bring a gentle questioning. What is this fear or limiting belief trying to teach me? What is the underlying need that this tension is expressing? As we look beneath the surface, we often find a vulnerability or insecurity that needs acknowledgement and care. Here, the practice of the flow role becomes a path of internal dialogue and reconciliation. As we bring a loving presence to these parts of us that are afraid or feeling inadequate, we begin to transform these blocks from the inside out. And each time we choose to breathe through a moment of discomfort, each time we allow ourselves to flow despite the hesitation, we are reprogramming our mental and emotional patterns. We are training our mind and nervous system to respond to challenge with greater resilience and adaptability. Over time and repetition, this constant practice of facing and dissolving blocks on the mat begins to transfer to other areas of life. We develop a greater capacity to be with uncertainty, to embrace vulnerability, and to move beyond fear. The flow role, therefore, becomes much more than a physical practice. It is a practice of emotional liberation and psychological expansion. Each moment on the mat becomes an opportunity to free ourselves from old patterns and open up to new possibilities of being and living in the world. The flow role and the cultivation of serenity. As we practice flow, rolling with the intention of identifying and dissolving psychological barriers, something fascinating begins to happen. Gradually, the moments of tension and hesitation become less frequent and less intense. The flow of the practice becomes smoother, more continuous, like a river finding its natural path through the landscape. This growing fluidity is a direct reflection of the serenity that begins to permeate our minds. As the layers of fear, doubt, and resistance are dissolved through conscious practice, what emerges is an increasingly stable and unshakable state of presence. On the mat, this serenity manifests as an ability to move with one's partner in harmony, spontaneously responding to each shift in energy and position. There is no longer a need to control or force situations. Only the continuous dance of giving and receiving, leading and following. This same quality of presence, when cultivated, begins to permeate all areas of life. We develop an emotional resilience that allows us to navigate the ups and downs with grace and equanimity. We become less reactive to external triggers and more capable of choosing our responses with wisdom and compassion. The flow role, therefore, becomes a practice of cultivating serenity of the mind, not as a state of numbness or disconnection, but as a vibrant, engaged, and responsive presence to the current moment. It is the tranquility that comes from knowing that we can find our center even amidst chaos, that we can move with the flow of life rather than resist it. And so, through the constant repetition of this practice, both on the mat and off, we gradually become the embodiment of the serenity. We become practitioners, not just of jujitsu, but of the art of living with presence, wisdom, and fluidity. Conclusion. Throughout this chapter, we explored how flow rolling can become a powerful tool for identifying and overcoming psychological barriers. As we dissolve these mental and emotional barriers, something extraordinary happens. Our learning accelerates exponentially. With a mind free from limiting beliefs, fears, and resistances, we become far more receptive to the teachings of jujitsu. The absorption of techniques and concepts becomes natural and fluid, as if we were remembering a long-forgotten knowledge. 
This happens because an unblocked mind is fully present and open. It doesn't get distracted by thoughts of failure or self-limiting judgments. Instead, all our energy and focus are channeled into the current moment, allowing the wisdom of the body and mind to work in perfect harmony. Moreover, the mental unblocking cultivated through flow rolling extends beyond the mat. We begin to face life with more lightness, flexibility, and resilience. Challenges that once seemed insurmountable become opportunities for growth and learning. Therefore, as you incorporate the practice of flow, rolling into your routine, be attentive to these subtle yet profound transformations in your learning process. Celebrate each layer of tension that dissolves, knowing that you are not only becoming a better practitioner, but also evolving as a human being. Stay open, receptive, and anchored in the present moment. With a free mind and a dedicated heart, your progress in jujitsu and in life will be truly remarkable. Practical Exercises 2. Deepen the Flow Roll. In this section, we will present a series of exercises and practices designed to deepen your exploration of the flow roll. Each of these activities addresses a different aspect of the flow state. From cultivating sensitivity and connection to developing creativity and fluidity of movement. By incorporating these exercises into your training routine, you will be fine tuning your bodily, mental, and emotional instrument to tune into the subtler frequencies of flow. You will be planting the seeds for the flow experience to become not just an occasional peak, but a consistent and accessible state of being. Remember, Mastery of the flow roll is a path, not a destination. Approach these exercises with a beginner's mind, embracing the process of discovery and allowing yourself to be surprised at every step of the way. Be willing to explore, make mistakes, and marvel at the revelations that emerge. Above all, bring a spirit of curiosity and playfulness to your practice. The flow roll is, at its core, a celebration of the joy of movement and connection. Allow this lightness to permeate your engagement with these exercises, even as challenges arise. Eyes Closed Flow Roll. This exercise is a powerful tool for sharpening your sensitivity and attunement to your training partner. By removing the sense of sight, you are invited to rely more deeply on tactile sensation and spatial awareness to navigate the interaction. Instructions. Begin the flow roll as usual, establishing an initial connection with your partner. After a few minutes, gently close your eyes, keeping them closed for the remainder of the practice. Bring your attention to the other sensation, the touch of the G, the pressure of your partner, the movement of the air around you. Allow these sensations to guide your movements. Trust your proprioceptive sense to navigate the transitions and respond intuitively to your partner. If thoughts or distractions arise, Gently redirect your attention back to the present physical sensations. Continue the flow roll with eyes closed for a predetermined time or until you and your partner feel it's time to end. After the exercise, take a moment to reflect on the experience. What did you notice with your eyes closed that normally goes unnoticed? How did this affect your connection with your partner and your sense of flow? The benefits of this exercise are manifold. First, it cultivates greater sensory awareness, allowing you to access subtle information that can be lost when we rely too heavily on vision. This can lead to increased sensitivity to your partner's intentions and movements. Moreover, practicing with eyes closed can deepen your inner presence and focus. Without the distraction of the visual world, you are naturally invited to turn inward to the direct experience of the moment. With consistent practice of this exercise, you may discover a new depth of connection and flow in your roles. You may find yourself responding more instinctively, trusting the wisdom of your body to lead the way. Remember to start this exercise slowly and with a trusted partner. As your confidence grows, you can explore more dynamic and fluid eyes closed flow rolls. Flow roll with attack and defense switching. This exercise is designed to develop your ability to smoothly switch between offensive and defensive modes during the role. It promotes adaptability, dynamic reading of your partner's game, 
and fluidity in transitions. Instructions. Begin the flow roll as usual, finding a comfortable rhythm with your partner. Set a time interval for the switches, usually around one aim two minutes. You can use a timer or simply sense when it's time to change. During the first interval, player A assumes the offensive role, seeking to pass the guard, establish dominant positions, and look for submissions without ever stopping the flow. Player B works defensively, maintaining guard, escaping inferior positions, and staying in constant motion. The idea is not to stop the attack, but to deal with it as fluidly as possible. When the interval ends, the roles reverse. Player B now takes on the offensive role, while player A works on defense with no pause between defense and attack, transitioning as naturally as possible. Continue alternating between attack and defense each interval, maintaining a continuous flow of movement during the transitions. After the exercise, Take a moment to discuss the experience with your partner. What did you notice about your game during the different roles? What were the challenges and successes? The benefits of this exercise are manifold. First, it develops your ability to quickly adapt to changes in the role's dynamics. You learn to fluidly switch between modes, responding to the immediate context. Moreover, practicing both attack and defense in a balanced way promotes a more complete and well-rounded game. You develop comfort and competence in all aspects of jiu-jitsu, rather than specializing one-sidedly. With consistent practice of this exercise, you may develop a greater sensitivity to the flow of a role, anticipating and responding to transitions more organically. Your game becomes more dynamic, adaptable, and hard to decipher for your opponents. Remember to adjust the intervals according to your level of conditioning and experience. Beginners may prefer longer intervals, allowing more time to work in each mode, while advanced practitioners may benefit from faster switches to simulate the accelerated pace of a fight. Flow Roll, synchronized with breathing. This exercise combines the fluid movement of flow roll with the power of conscious breathing. By synchronizing your physical actions, with the natural rhythms of inhalation and exhalation, you can access a state of deep presence and connection with your partner. Instructions. Begin the flow roll as usual, finding a comfortable rhythm with your partner. Bring your attention to your breath, observing the natural sensation of inhaling and exhaling. Start synchronizing your movements with your breath. On each exhalation, initiate a movement exploring a technique or transition. On each inhalation, allow the movement to come to a natural conclusion or pause. Invite your partner to join you in this rhythm so that you are moving and breathing in unison. Continue this pattern of movement and breath for several minutes, allowing an organic flow to emerge. If you find yourself holding your breath or forcing movements, gently bring your attention back to the natural rhythm of the breath, allowing it to guide the roll. The benefits of this exercise are profound and multifaceted. First, by bringing conscious awareness to the breath, you are automatically bringing your mind into the present moment. This helps to dissipate mental distraction and cultivate a state of serene focus. Moreover, synchronizing movement with breath creates a sense of rhythm and harmony within the role. Rather than separate activities, the act of breathing and the act of moving become an integrated, fluid process. Finally, when both you and your partner are engaged in this exercise, a deep sense of connection and synchronicity can emerge. It's as if you are participating in a shared dance where one person's movement seamlessly merges with the other's. Remember not to force or control the breath. The goal is not to breathe in a specific way, but rather to allow the natural breath to express itself and inform your movements. With consistent practice of this exercise, you may discover a new dimension of fluidity and connection in your flow role. The breath becomes a powerful ally, anchoring you in the present moment and allowing the spontaneous play of jujitsu to unfold. Chest training. This exercise challenges you to approach the flow role with a strategic calculated mindset, similar to a game of chess. 
By alternating between deliberate moves and pauses for analysis, you develop your ability to think tactically and respond with intention and precision. Instructions. Have your partner assume a guard position while you start in a passing position. Now, instead of a continuous flow, you will alternate between moves and pauses. Player A makes a single move. This could be advancing a position, initiating a technique, or making a transition. After player A's move, both players stop and pause the role. This is player B's moment to analyze the new situation and plan their response. After a few seconds, player B makes their responsive move. Again, after this move, both players pause. The process repeats, with each player making a single move at a time, followed by a pause for analysis and planning. Continue in this format for a predetermined number of moves or a set period of time. The benefits of this exercise are multifaceted. First, it cultivates a more deliberate, intentional approach to jujitsu. Each move is made with a clear purpose, based on a reading of the current situation. Moreover, the pauses between moves provide an opportunity to practice real-time strategic analysis. You learn to quickly assess the position, consider possible moves, and anticipate your partner's responses. With consistent practice of this exercise, you can develop a more tactical mindset in your jiu-jitsu. Your movements become more efficient and deliberate, guided by a clear understanding of the tactical dynamics of the role. Remember, the goal here is not speed, but intentionality. Use the pauses to really dive deeply into the analysis of the position. And don't be afraid to think outside the box. Sometimes, the most unexpected move can be the most effective. Over time, you can start to incorporate this chess mindset into your regular roles, even without the explicit pauses. The practice becomes a continuous flow, but with each movement imbued with strategic purpose, understanding physical principles. This exercise emphasizes the importance of understanding the underlying mechanisms that make jujitsu techniques work. Rather than just memorizing sequences of movements, you are invited to explore the physical principles that make them effective. Instructions. Choose a specific technique that you'd like to refine. It could be a guard pass, a submission, or a positional transition. Deconstruct the technique into its essential components. Identify the key physical principles at play, levers, torque, weight transfer, etc. Practice the technique slowly, paying close attention to these principles. Notice how small changes in alignment or force application can affect the technique's efficiency. Experiment with variations of the technique that emphasize different principles. For example, if you're studying an arm lock, try applying it with your weight from different angles, observing how this changes the pressure on your partner's joints. No Discuss your findings with your partner and with your instructors. Compare notes on how understanding the physical principles can enhance the application of the technique. The benefits of this approach are profound. By understanding the whys behind the techniques, you gain not just an edge in execution, but an adaptation and innovation. When you master the principles, you become less reliant on memorized sequences and more able to fluidly respond to the unique challenges of each role. You start to see jujitsu not as a collection of discrete moves, but as a fluid language of physics applied to the human body. Remember, this exercise isn't about discarding the importance of repetition and practice. These will always be essential ingredients for mastery. But by adding a layer of conceptual understanding to your practice, you enrich it immensely. Over time, and with dedicated exploration, this exercise can transform your art. Your techniques become not just more effective, but more elegant, more adaptable, and more truly your own. Imaginary Flow Roll. This exercise uses the power of visualization to refine your technique and identify areas for improvement in your game. By mentally practicing a perfect flow roll, you can begin to make that vision a reality. Instructions. Find a quiet, comfortable place to sit or lie down. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths to quiet the mind. Begin to visualize yourself engaged in a flow roll. Imagine each detail vividly, 
the space around you, your partner, the feel of the GI, etc. See yourself moving with fluidity and precision. Your movements are smooth and efficient, flowing seamlessly with those of your partner. If at any point the visualization becomes less fluid, if you see yourself hesitating, forcing, or stalling, pause and observe. What might be the reason for this interruption in flow? What could you do differently? After identifying the issue, mentally rewind the scene and see yourself approaching the situation in a new way. Repeat until flow is restored. Continue the mental flow roll for several minutes or until you've navigated through a variety of positions and transitions. The benefits of this exercise are manifold. First, mental practice has been shown to be nearly as effective as physical practice and skill enhancement. By repeatedly visualizing perfect techniques and transitions, you are training your brain and body to execute them. Moreover, the imaginary flow role offers a unique opportunity to identify and troubleshoot issues in your game. In visualization, you can freeze, rewind, and repeat moments at will. A luxury we don't have in a live role. With consistent practice of this exercise, you can start to notice a significant transfer from your mental practice to your physical practice. Your movements will become smoother, your decision-making more instinctive, and your overall sense of flow deeper. Remember, the key to effective visualization is vividness and detail. Really see, hear, and feel yourself executing the techniques. The more real you make the experience in your mind, the more powerful the effect will be. Solo flow roll training. This exercise takes the principles of flow roll into your solo practice, allowing you to refine your technical and bodily fluency even without a partner. Instructions. Find an open space where you can move freely. Start on your knees or standing as you prefer. Begin moving as if you were engaged in a flow roll, initially in slow motion. Imagine an invisible partner and react to their imagined movements. Flow through different positions and transitions, always maintaining continuous movement. If you find yourself in a position where you don't know how to proceed, pause, reset, and continue. Gradually increase the speed of your movements while maintaining smoothness and control. Pay attention to any points of hesitation, stiffness, or discomfort. When you identify them, stop, breathe, and explore ways to move through them with more ease. Continue for several minutes or until you feel you've explored a variety of movements and positions. The benefits of solo flow roll practice are manifold. First, it allows you to practice movement fluency without the distractions or pressures of working with a partner. You can really focus on your own sense of flow and identify any personal blockages. Moreover, by not being constrained to a partner's movements, you have the freedom to explore transitions and sequences that may not arise naturally in a normal role. This can lead to new discoveries and innovations in your game. With consistent practice of this exercise, you can develop greater confidence and ease in your movement, which translates directly to your performance on the mat. Your body learns to flow without hesitation, guided by an instinctive sense of timing and positioning. Remember to approach this exercise with an attitude of play and experimentation. There are no wrong movements here, only opportunities to discover and grow. If you find yourself getting frustrated or self-critical, take a deep breath and return to a state of relaxed curiosity. So find an open space, tune into your body, and embark on this solo exploration journey. You may be surprised at the wisdom and creativity that reside within your own movement. Being a good training partner is essential for mutual growth in jiu-jitsu. Just as a boxing partner who holds the focus mitts right, our role is to provide the appropriate resistance and feedback for our colleague to execute techniques with fluidity and confidence. This is especially important when we are training specific movements. In these moments, we are not trying to win against our partner, but rather to collaborate for the technical improvement of both. By offering the right amount of opposition, we allow our partner to feel the proper mechanics of the technique and make the necessary adjustments. However, it is equally important to avoid the opposite extreme of being overly passive or complacent partners. 
a little resistance and unpredictability is crucial to simulate the variations encountered in real fighting situations. The key is to find the balance, graduating our response according to our partner's skill level and goals. Beyond the physical aspect, being a good partner involves cultivating a mental attitude of generosity, patience, and empathy on the mat. Recognizing that each person is on their own unique learning journey allows us to offer more personalized and effective support. Therefore, the next time you are training specific techniques, remember the boxing focus mitt analogy. Ask yourself, how can I hold my partner's focus mitts today? How can I provide the ideal conditions for their growth and discovery? By making jujitsu a practice of mutual support, we elevate not only our individual skills, but the collective spirit of the art. Chapter six, diving into the unknown. The flow role as an inner mirror, the journey of self-knowledge through the flow role. Up to this point, we've explored the fundamentals of flow jujitsu, from its basic principles to the techniques for cultivating a state of presence and fluidity on the mat. We've seen how this practice can help us break limiting beliefs, develop a growth mindset, and form new habits that support our evolution. Now, I invite you to embark on an even deeper journey, a journey into yourself. In the previous chapters, we touched on the surface of the transformative potential of the flow role. But to truly harness this practice as a vehicle for self-knowledge, we need to be willing to dive into the depths of our being. This dive requires courage. It requires a willingness to face aspects of ourselves that we may have avoided or denied. It requires the humility to recognize that often our unconscious patterns control us, even when we consciously know what we should do. The flow role, in its simplicity and spontaneity, becomes a powerful mirror to reflect these hidden patterns. In the heat of the moment, when we're fully immersed in the unpredictable dynamics of the flow role, our instinctive reactions come to the surface. Fears, insecurities, impulses to control, they all manifest in the way we move, breathe, and interact with our partner. And that's where the golden opportunity for self-knowledge lies. By observing these reactions with curiosity and without judgment, we begin to illuminate the shadows of our psyche. We start to recognize the dissonances between what we think and what we actually do. We begin to clearly see the inner barriers that prevent us from expressing our fullest potential, both on the mat and in life. In the pages that follow, we'll explore these ideas in depth. We'll use Maslow's hierarchy of needs as a map to understand how different levels of psychological maturity impact our practice of jujitsu and our ability to flow with life. And most importantly, we'll discover how the flow role can become a powerful tool for transcending these levels and reaching greater freedom and authenticity. So I invite you to join me in this fascinating exploration of the intersection between jujitsu and the human psyche. It can be uncharted territory and at times uncomfortable, but by embracing this unknown with openness and courage, we open the doors to truly profound transformation, the rules of the flow role, and the challenge of following them. The flow role, in its essence, is a simple practice. Two partners engage in fluid, continuous movement, seeking to maintain a smooth, harmonious connection. The goal is not to win over the other, but rather to explore and expand the possibilities of movement in sync while always seeking progression in the inherent positions of the fight. However, although the rules are clear, maintain a steady pace, avoid brute force, prioritize lightness and adaptability. Many practitioners find themselves struggling to follow these principles. Even with an intellectual understanding of what should be done, something seems to hinder the full expression of the flow role. It's common to observe practitioners suddenly accelerating the pace when they sense an opening for a finish, or rigidly resisting when they find themselves in an unfavorable position. Fluidity gives way to abrupt, disconnected movements, 
and the synchrony between partners is lost. These patterns of automatic reaction reveal a disconnect between conscious knowledge and the unconscious impulses that govern our actions. It's as if there is a hidden program running in the background, dictating our responses even when we try to follow a different script. This dissonance between intention and action can be frustrating and disconcerting. After all, if we know what we should do, why is it so difficult to do it consistently? The answer lies in the deeper layers of our psyche, where ingrained beliefs, fears, and conditioning reside, shaping our perception and behavior. The flow role, in its challenging simplicity, becomes a mirror that reflects these hidden influences. By placing us in a situation where our habitual patterns no longer work, it forces us to confront the limitations of our own conscious control. It is in this confrontation that the seed of growth resides. By recognizing the dissonance between what we want to do and what we actually do, we open the door to a deeper exploration of ourselves. We begin to question the origins of these automatic patterns and seek ways to transcend them. In this sense, the difficulty in following the rules of the flow role is not a sign of failure, but rather an invitation to a courageous dive into the unknown of our own mind. It is an opportunity to bring to light the unconscious programs that control us and, through this awareness, begin to rewrite them. Therefore, if you find yourself struggling to express the fluidity and lightness of the flow role, know that you are not alone. The struggle is a reflection of the human condition and each moment of challenge on the mat is a precious chance to grow beyond our self-imposed limits. The unconscious revealed how jujitsu brings to light our hidden patterns. Now, having explored the difficulties of following the rules of the flow role and how they reflect a disconnect between our conscious and unconscious mind, we will now dive deeper into the dynamics of these two aspects of the psyche and how jujitsu can illuminate them. The unconscious is a vast reservoir of memories, beliefs, fears, and desires that shape our perceptions and behaviors without us being fully aware of it. It is like an iceberg with only a small tip visible above the water, while the majority remains hidden in the depths. Our patterns of thought, emotional reaction, and even our body posture are deeply influenced by these unconscious forces. They operate behind the scenes, guiding our actions and decisions in ways that often seem beyond our control. This is where jujitsu becomes a powerful tool for bringing these hidden patterns to the light of consciousness. The unpredictable and physically intense nature of the practice puts us in situations where our instinctive and habitual reactions are triggered. When we're put in an uncomfortable position on the mat, our unconscious fear of vulnerability may arise as muscular tension or dysregulated breathing. When our partner executes a technique we don't know, our need for control might manifest as resistance or overuse of force. These moments of stress and challenge become valuable opportunities to observe ourselves on a deeper level. By paying attention to the physical sensations, emotions, and thought patterns that arise during practice, we begin to recognize the unconscious influences that govern us. Jiu-Jitsu, then, acts as a mirror, reflecting aspects of ourselves that usually remain in the shadows. It confronts us with our limitations, fears, and self-imposed beliefs, not as a judgment, but as an invitation to awareness and growth. Through this growing awareness, we gain the opportunity to bring these unconscious patterns into the light of conscious discernment. We can start to question their validity and usefulness and gradually transform them into something that serves us better. This is an ongoing and often challenging process. It takes courage to face parts of ourselves that may be uncomfortable or even painful. But it is through this honest and loving confrontation that true integration and healing become possible. Thus, the practice of jujitsu becomes not only a path to physical mastery, but also a vehicle for self-knowledge and inner transformation. 
Each role becomes an opportunity to dive deeper into ourselves, bringing more and more of our unconscious being into the light of awareness. The body doesn't lie, finding cognitive dissonances on the mat. Having explored how jujitsu can reveal our unconscious patterns, we now turn to the intimate connection between body and mind and how this relationship manifests on the mat. One of the most profound insights jujitsu offers us is that the body doesn't lie. While our conscious mind can deceive itself or rationalize, the body always expresses the truth of the present moment. It is an honest mirror reflecting our inner state with relentless accuracy. In the context of the flow role, this bodily honesty becomes especially evident. When our thoughts are out of harmony with our physical actions, the body exposes this dissonance without hesitation. For example, we may think we're relaxed and present, but if our shoulders are tense and our breathing is shallow, the body reveals an inner state of anxiety or resistance. We may believe we're being soft and fluid, but if our movements are abrupt and disconnected, the body exposes a lack of attunement to the flow of the moment. These cognitive dissonance, the gaps between what we think and what's actually happening, are valuable opportunities for self-knowledge. They invite us to look beyond the stories we tell ourselves and face the reality of our present experience. The mat then becomes a laboratory for exploring and reconciling these dissonances. Through attentive practice and deep listening to the body, we begin to align our conscious mind with our embodied experience. This process of alignment requires a commitment to honesty and humility. It requires a willingness to recognize when our ideas about ourselves don't match reality and the courage to embrace the truth, even when it challenges our self-image. As we cultivate this inner honesty, something extraordinary begins to happen. The dissonances start to dissolve and mind and body become increasingly united into an integrated whole. Our thoughts, emotions, and actions align and we move through the world with growing authenticity and presence. This integration is reflected in our jujitsu as an increasingly fluid and spontaneous expression. Our movements become a natural extension of our being and the flow role becomes a dance of continuous joyful discovery so the next time you're on the mat, I invite you to listen deeply to your body. Notice the moments when it may be revealing a different truth than the narrative of your mind. Embrace these dissonances as portals to deeper self-knowledge and allow them to guide you toward an ever more authentic and integrated expression of who you are. This is the true gift of jujitsu, the opportunity to meet ourselves fully in all our complexity and truth and to express ourselves from this place of deep integrity. And it's in this expression that the flow truly begins to flow on and off the mat. Understanding our journey, Maslow's hierarchy in the dojo. As we embark on the quest to understand our motivations in martial arts training, such as in flow jujitsu, it is essential to look at the steps of Maslow's hierarchy. This psychological theory offers us a valuable map to explore the different layers of needs that drive our actions and choices, both on and off the mat. To better understand the origin and meaning of these steps, it is worth delving a little into the history of the man who conceived them, Abraham Maslow. Maslow was a renowned American psychologist who dedicated his career to studying human potential and what drives us to grow and realize ourselves. He was particularly interested in exceptionally healthy and creative individuals, those who seem to thrive despite adversity. By studying these admirable people, Maslow began to identify recurring patterns in their needs and motivations. It was from these insightful observations that he developed his famous hierarchy, proposing that our needs follow a priority order. According to his theory, we must first satisfy our most basic demands, such as nutrition and safety before we can truly focus on higher aspirations, such as personal fulfillment and transcendence. This vision revolutionized the psychology of the time, which until then had focused mainly on the study of pathologies. Maslow invited us to look at the human being in a more optimistic and integral way, recognizing our innate potential for self-realization, an impulse that he believed to be as natural and necessary as hunger or thirst. 
According to Maslow, our needs are organized in a hierarchy, starting with the most basic and fundamental for survival, and progressing to the highest and most related to personal fulfillment. Understanding which step we are on can help us better understand our motivations for training and how jujitsu fits into our growth journey. On the first step, we find physiological needs, such as breathing, eating, resting. Here, the dojo can be seen as a refuge for maintaining health and improving physical conditioning. Training serves as an escape valve from daily stress and an aid for restorative sleep, meeting these basic needs. Moving up to the second step, we have the need for safety. At this level, the dojo can be perceived as a safe place where we learn to defend ourselves and feel protected. Training offers a routine and structure that brings us a sense of stability and predictability in an often chaotic world. On the third step, we find the need for belonging and love. Here, the jujitsu community plays a crucial role. The dojo becomes a space for connection, where we form deep bonds with our training partners. We feel part of something greater, a family united by shared values and passions. As we climb up the hierarchy, we reach the fourth step, related to esteem and recognition. At this stage, jujitsu becomes a tool for building self-confidence and a sense of accomplishment. Each small victory on the mat, each new belt earned, helps us strengthen our self-esteem and feel valued within the community. Finally, at the top of the pyramid, we find self-actualization. At this level, Jiu-Jitsu transcends the physical and becomes a path of self-discovery and authentic expression. It is here that we find the true state of flow, where we merge with the eternal present and allow our deepest essence to shine through each movement. As we reflect on these steps and their relationship to our practice, we can gain a deeper understanding of our motivations and of how Jiu-Jitsu fits into our personal journey of growth. Remember, each of us is at a unique point in this climb, and there is no right or wrong. The important thing is to embrace the process and allow the art to guide us towards an ever more integrated and authentic version of ourselves. Before diving into the specifics of each level, it's crucial to understand that our journey through the steps is not merely external. Each level also represents a set of psychological conditionings that shape our experience of reality. Often, even when our external needs are met, we may remain stuck in old patterns of scarcity, fear, or inadequacy. To truly move towards self-actualization, we need to bring these limiting beliefs to the light of awareness and choose to let them go. This is the true essence of liberation, and jujitsu, as we will see, is a powerful ally in this process. The first step. Transmuting the survival instinct. Starting with the first step, that of physiological needs, which includes basic aspects like breathing, eating, sleeping. In the context of jujitsu, we can see this level manifested as the need to survive during sparring. When we're stuck in this survival mode, our mind is consumed by fear. Every movement of our partner is perceived as a threat, activating our fight or flight system. In this state, we become tense, rigid, holding our breath. Our movements become reactive and disconnected, guided more by panic than by technique. It's easy to see how the survival mindset is the opposite of the flow state. Flow requires a sense of safety and relaxation, a surrender to the present moment. When we're constantly preoccupied with our physical survival, there is no mental space for creativity, for fluidity, for the joy of movement, for movement's sake. Moreover, when we're stuck on the first step, we tend to see our partner as an adversary, someone we need to defend against. This mentality creates a separation, a barrier to true connection and communication through movement. That is the essence of flow rolling. To transcend this level and access higher states of consciousness on the mat, we must first cultivate a sense of physical and emotional safety. This involves building a solid foundation of technique so that we can trust our skills, even under pressure. 
It also involves developing a sense of trust and connection with our training partners. As we feel increasingly safe on the mat, our energy can shift from mere survival to exploration, growth, and eventually self-actualization through the practice. This process of progressing through the hierarchy is neither linear nor automatic. It requires a conscious commitment to facing our fears and insecurities. But every small step we take towards transcending the survival mode brings us closer to the promise of flow, that state of grace and union with something greater than ourselves. So, if you find yourself stuck on the first step during your roles, know that you are not alone. Recognize it as an opportunity to explore your fear responses with curiosity and compassion. With patient and purposeful practice, you can gradually transform your experience, climbing the ladder toward the fullness of human expression on the mat. The second step, embracing the security of courage. Let's explore how getting stuck on the second step of Maslow's hierarchy, that of safety and stability, can prevent us from reaching higher states of consciousness on the mat. At this level, the jiu-jitsu practitioner, having already mastered the basic skills, seeks to feel safe and stable in the execution of techniques. The focus turns to consistency, to being able to replicate movements with precision and reliability. However, an excessive attachment to safety can become a trap. When we are obsessed with executing techniques perfectly, we fear failure and uncertainty. We hesitate to step out of our comfort zone to explore new possibilities. This limiting mindset restricts our ability to flow freely on the mat. Instead of surrendering to the present moment and responding creatively to what arises, we get stuck in rigid patterns. Our movements become mechanical, devoid of the spontaneity and adaptability that are hallmarks of the true flow state. Moreover, when our need for safety is not adequately met, we may become overly focused on defense, always worried about neutralizing threats. This defensive mentality creates tension and blocks our ability to authentically connect with our partner. To transcend this step and access deeper states of presence and flow, we need to cultivate a new kind of security. Not the security of perfection or control, but the security that comes from trusting the process, from embracing uncertainty as an opportunity for growth. This requires a detachment from specific techniques and a greater focus on fundamental principles. It requires a willingness to experiment, to make mistakes and learn from them. Above all, it requires a shift in mindset from trying to impose our will to becoming permeable, responsive to the dynamic flow of the role. As we become familiar with uncertainty, as we allow ourselves to be moved rather than always trying to control, we begin to touch the deeper layers of flow. Our movements become more fluid, more intuitive. We start to experience moments of union with our partner, where the separation between I and other dissolves. This is the promise of jujitsu, when we transcend the attachment to external security and cultivate a deep inner security. It is an invitation to face our fears, to embrace the unknown with courage and curiosity. And it is through this process of letting go, of surrendering to the moment, that the higher possibilities of the art begin to unfold. The third step, weaving connections on the mat of life. Let us now dive into the third level of Maslow's hierarchy and explore how it manifests in the journey of the jujitsu practitioner. At this level, we find the social needs, the needs for love and belonging. Here, the mat becomes much more than a physical space. It is a fertile ground for the blossoming of deep human connections. In the context of jiu-jitsu, this longing for belonging translates into the camaraderie and solidarity that emerges among practitioners in the dojo. Through shared fights and training sessions, powerful emotional bonds are forged. The sweat, the laughter, the challenges overcome together. All of this contributes to the creation of a chosen family, united by a common passion. However, when we become excessively attached to this need to belong, we can find ourselves stuck on this step. The desire to be accepted and loved can lead us to compromise our authenticity, 
to mold our identity to fit the group's expectations. We can become dependent on external approval, fearing rejection to the point of sacrificing our individual growth. On the mat, this attachment can manifest as a hesitation to take risks, to explore new paths for fear of disappointing our companions. We can become complacent, satisfied to remain within the boundaries of what is familiar and comfortable for the group. To transcend this level and access higher states of consciousness, it is necessary to cultivate a sense of belonging that does not depend on external conformity. It's about finding security and acceptance within ourselves so that we can relate to others from a place of fullness rather than lack. In flow jiu-jitsu, this means embracing our individuality, honoring our unique voice, even when it diverges from the norm. It means being brave enough to be vulnerable, to reveal our struggles and insecurities, knowing that our value is not conditioned on others' approval. As we cultivate this radical self-acceptance, our experience of belonging transforms. Instead of a desperate need, it becomes an expression of interdependence, a recognition of our inherent connection with all beings, transcending the boundaries of the dojo. In this state, we become truly free to flow with others on the mat. Our flow roles become a spontaneous dialogue, a co-creation born of mutual trust and respect. Through this freedom, we achieve a sense of unity that is at once deeply personal and greater than any individual. Therefore, if you find yourself longing for love and belonging in your jujitsu journey, know that you are not alone. Embrace this desire as a doorway to deeper self-exploration. As you nurture acceptance and love within yourself, your ability to authentically connect with others will naturally blossom. And it is in this flower of genuine connection that the seeds of true flow begin to sprout. Often driven by the deep desire to belong, we end up perpetuating attitudes and behaviors that are not aligned with our most intimate principles. In the eagerness to be accepted and valued by the jujitsu tribe, we run the risk of sacrificing our individuality, shaping ourselves to fit an external ideal. It's a subtle process, almost imperceptible. Gradually, we take on the tastes, opinions, and mannerisms that we perceive as valued by the group. We put on a mask, playing a character that we believe others expect from us. But in doing so, we distance ourselves from our authentic essence. The mat, as a microcosm of life, is fertile ground for this dynamic. Surrounded by figures we admire, be they instructors or more experienced colleagues, it is tempting to model ourselves in their image and likeness. We absorb their techniques, their fighting style, even their posture outside the dojo in the hope of gaining their approval and respect. However, this path inevitably leads to a sense of disconnection and dissatisfaction. After all, we are living someone else's life, not our own. We are striving to fill a mold that was not made for us, denying the unique expression we have to offer the world. The key to transcending this step is to cultivate the courage to be authentic, even in the face of possible rejection. It is understanding that true belonging does not come from being the same as others, but from being fully yourself in the presence of others. It's about bringing your whole being to the mat, with your vulnerabilities, your unique humanity. When we allow ourselves to be seen in this way, something extraordinary happens. We discover that the acceptance we so crave is already within us. We no longer need to contort ourselves to gain the approval of others because we are at peace being exactly who we are. And, paradoxically, it is in this state of authenticity that the deepest and most genuine connections are formed. In flow jiu-jitsu, this translates into finding your own voice on the mat. It's about absorbing techniques and principles, yes, but filtered through the lens of your own experience, your own body, your own understanding. It's about fully surrendering to the moment without the concern of how you are being perceived. In this state of authentic presence, something magical unfolds. Your movements become a spontaneous expression of your deepest truth. Each flow role becomes a unique dance 
co-created in the space between you and your partner. And through this courageous expression of individuality, you paradoxically touch something universal, the shared essence that connects us all beyond the masks of the ego. So if you find yourself stuck on this third step, playing a role in search of belonging, remember that you are not alone. Have compassion for yourself, for the desire for connection is deeply human. But also have the courage to let go of the masks, layer by layer, revealing the raw beauty of who you are. For it is only by embracing our individuality that we can hope to touch the deepest promise of jujitsu, the union of authentic beings, flowing together in an expression of something greater than any one of us. This is true belonging, and it is available to you the exact moment you commit to being nothing more and nothing less than who you are. The fourth step, conquering self-esteem through dedicated practice. Let's explore the fourth step of Maslow's hierarchy and its manifestation in the journey of the jujitsu practitioner. At this level, we find the needs of esteem, which involve both self-respect and recognition from others. In the context of jujitsu, this step is intimately related to the pursuit of technical excellence and personal growth. As the practitioner dedicates themselves diligently to improving their skills, they naturally develop a sense of pride and accomplishment. Each small victory on the mat, each new technique mastered, contributes to building a solid self-esteem. At the same time, recognition from professors and colleagues plays a significant role at this stage. When the practitioner's progress is noticed and celebrated by those around them, it reinforces their sense of worth and belonging within the jiu-jitsu community. However, it is crucial that the practitioner be aware of the pitfalls of this step. The pursuit of esteem, when poorly balanced, can turn into an excessive dependence on external validation. The fighter may find themselves trapped in the cycle of self-worth, conditioned by the achievement of belts, medals, and praise. To transcend this step in a healthy way, it is essential that the practitioner cultivate a mature relationship with the pursuit of recognition. This involves valuing achievements and growth, yes, but always keeping them in perspective. It's about understanding that true value lies in the journey itself, in character development, and contribution to the community, far more than in transient external rewards. In this sense, the intention of the sensei is fundamental. More than simply distributing belts and awards, a good teacher will encourage their students to find satisfaction in the learning and improvement process itself. They will help them develop a self-esteem that is resilient to the oscillations of others' opinions. On the mat, this balance manifests as an attitude of humility and respect, both for oneself and for others. The practitioner who has transcended the trap of conditioned esteem is not shaken by occasional defeats, nor do they become arrogant with victories. They understand that each training session is an opportunity to learn and grow, regardless of the immediate outcome. As the practitioner advances in this understanding, their experience on the mat is transformed. Roles cease to be a validation of personal worth and become a celebration of the shared journey. Each interaction is an opportunity to elevate oneself and the other to strengthen the bonds that unite the community and evolve jujitsu as a whole. It is a call to transcend the pursuit of external recognition and find an inexhaustible source of value and respect within oneself. It's about approaching the art with excellence and dedication, yes, but always with the understanding that the true reward lies in the growth and human connection cultivated along the way. An example of how the pursuit of esteem is reflected in flow. Rolling, imagine a jujitsu practitioner who is extremely focused on gaining the approval of their sensei and colleagues. During a flow roll, instead of fully surrendering to the moment and intuitively responding to their partner's movements, they find themselves trapped in their own head. 
With each decision, they hesitate, worried about how their choice will be perceived. Will trying that new guard make them look naive? Will retreating at that moment be seen as cowardice? These thoughts consume them, creating a barrier between them and the state of fluidity. Their movements become rigid, devoid of the smoothness and spontaneity that characterize a true flow role. They may even manage to execute impressive techniques, but they lack the lightness and authentic connection with their partner. If they come out victorious from the role, they feel a brief flash of validation, but it quickly dissipates, leaving them anxious for the next opportunity to prove their worth. If they lose, they are devastated, feeling as if their entire worth as a practitioner and person is in question. This example illustrates how imprisonment at the fourth step can create a significant barrier to experiencing true flow in jiu-jitsu. The practitioner is so consumed by the need for esteem and external validation that they become disconnected from the essence of the art, which is connection and free expression. The key here would be for this practitioner to recognize this pattern and begin to work on building a stronger and more independent self-esteem. As they cultivate the ability to value and respect themselves, regardless of external outcomes, they free themselves to fully engage in flow rolling as an expression of their inner journey, rather than a pursuit of external validation. This process of detachment is challenging but immensely liberating. As the practitioner finds their internal source of esteem, each training session becomes an opportunity not to prove but to explore, connect, and grow. And it is in this space of solid self-esteem that the higher possibilities of flow jiu-jitsu begin to unfold. The fifth step, the art of authentic expression. The fifth level of Maslow's hierarchy in jiu-jitsu represents a portal to artistic expression in its purest and most genuine form. Here, the practitioner transcends the limitations of the ego and allows their deepest essence to manifest through every movement on the mat. At this stage, jujitsu is no longer just a physical practice. It becomes a poetic language of the body and soul. Just as a painter leaves their unique mark on each brushstroke, the martial artist imprints their energetic signature on each technique executed. The fight transforms into a fluid dance, where partners engage in a silent and profound dialogue. There is no longer a need to prove anything, to win or lose. There is only the present moment and the total surrender to the art that flows through them. This state of grace is not achieved by chance. It requires an unwavering commitment to conscious practice and courageous self-discovery. The practitioner must be willing to face their own demons to recognize when the ego is in control and gently redirect it to the essence. In the fifth step, the harmony between mind and body reaches its apex. Mental tranquility allows the body to express itself with freedom and precision. Each movement becomes a spontaneous manifestation of the spirit, free from tensions and expectations. In this space of authenticity, creativity flourishes. New combinations of movements emerge naturally, not as products of the intellect, but as direct insights from bodily intelligence. The practitioner becomes a channel for innovation, an instrument through which the art evolves and expands. But perhaps the most transformative aspect of this step is its impact on life beyond the mat. By cultivating authentic expression in the practice of jujitsu, the individual learns to bring that presence and fluidity to all aspects of their existence. Each interaction becomes an opportunity to express their deepest truth, to connect with others from a place of integrity and compassion. In this sense, the fifth step is not only about mastering an art, but about becoming a living work of art. It's about sculpting oneself moment by moment, using practice as a chisel to remove everything superfluous and reveal the raw beauty that resides at the core of being. Therefore, the invitation of the fifth step is a call for the courage to be authentic, for total surrender to the art that animates our existence. It's a reminder that 
when we allow ourselves to be truly seen and expressed, we touch something universal and timeless. In this space of vulnerability and connection, we transcend the limits of individuality and become part of a larger tapestry, the infinite art of life unfolding. The sixth step, transcendence, service, and the expansion of consciousness. In the sixth step of the flow jujitsu hierarchy, we enter the domain of transcendence, where the individual journey merges with the collective purpose. Here, practice becomes a vehicle for expanding consciousness and serving humanity. The practitioner who has reached this level has transcended the limitations of the ego and awakened to a greater reality. They understand that their personal evolution is intrinsically linked to the evolution of everyone around them. Each interaction on the mat becomes an opportunity to elevate consciousness, to inspire and be inspired. The wisdom acquired over years of dedication to the art becomes a treasure to be shared. The master of flow jujitsu assumes the role of a mentor, guiding their students not only in technique, but on the path of inner transformation. They become a living example of the principles they teach, emanating presence, compassion, and wisdom. At this stage, the practice transcends the physical, reaching the realms of the psychological and the spiritual. Flow Jiu-Jitsu reveals itself as a powerful metaphor for life. Each challenge on the mat becomes an opportunity to cultivate inner peace, resilience, and adaptability. The lessons learned in the art overflow into all aspects of existence. The sixth degree is also characterized by a profound pursuit of harmony and balance. The practitioner understands that their well-being is intertwined with the well-being of their community and the world as a whole. They strive to create an environment where all can flourish, where competition gives way to cooperation and mutual growth. Here, the flow role reaches its highest expression. It is no longer just a physical training, but a dance of connection and shared evolution. Partners engage in a silent dialogue, each movement imbued with intention and purpose. The boundaries between self and other dissolve, revealing the fundamental interconnectedness of all life. Incorporating the sixth degree into Maslow's hierarchy is to recognize that human potential does not end with self-actualization. It is a call to go beyond ourselves, to embrace our responsibility as guardians of collective consciousness. Through service and dedication to something greater, we find the true meaning and purpose of our existence. The sixth degree invites us to a practice of presence, wisdom, and compassion, both on the mat and in life. It is a reminder that as we evolve individually, we have the opportunity and responsibility to elevate all of humanity with us. And it is through this commitment to personal and global transformation that we realize our highest potential as practitioners and as human beings. As we walk through the degrees of Maslow's hierarchy, we see that flow jiu-jitsu is much more than a physical practice. It is a path of profound personal evolution. Each degree invites us to transcend our limitations, face our fears, and reconnect with our most authentic essence. From the transmutation of the survival instinct to the construction of an unshakable self-esteem, the warrior's journey is full of challenges and rewards. And the most beautiful thing is that this journey never ends. There are always new levels of consciousness to be explored, new layers of our psyche to be integrated. As we explore the degrees of Maslow and their manifestation in the jujitsu journey, it is crucial to remember that this hierarchy is, above all, a map of the human psyche. Although our external circumstances certainly influence our ability to satisfy certain needs, ultimately, it is our mental posture that determines which degree we reside in. This means that, regardless of our current situation, we always have the opportunity to choose a higher perspective. The moment we consciously decide to embrace courage over fear, connection over isolation, growth over stagnation, we begin the journey to the next level.
Of course, this transition is rarely instant or easy. It requires deep self-honesty, a willingness to confront the shadows of the ego, and an unwavering commitment to one's own evolution. But one thing is certain. The instant we make that change internally, our external reality begins to realign. Indeed, Maslow's degrees are more psychological than objective. It is perfectly possible for someone to be on the safety degree in material terms, but feel trapped in survival emotionally. Think of a millionaire who lives obsessed with the idea of losing everything he has achieved. Even having much more than necessary to survive, he operates from a scarcity and fear mentality. Psychologically, he is as trapped as someone struggling to put food on the table. On the other hand, how many people do you know who have little in financial terms, but radiate a sense of abundance and gratitude? They have understood that true wealth lies in the quality of our inner experience, not in the number of zeros in the bank account. The same goes for other levels. Someone may have a legion of friends on social media, but feel totally disconnected and lonely inside. Or they may have just a handful of deep, authentic relationships and feel loved and belonging. You see, I'm not saying external circumstances don't matter. Of course, we need to take care of our basic needs. But the fundamental point is this. Our ultimate freedom lies in our ability to choose our attitude in the face of any situation. Viktor Frankl the psychiatrist who survived the horrors of Auschwitz, brilliantly captured this idea. He said, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So yes, let's strive to create the external condition that support our growth and well-being. But let's also cultivate the inner mastery that allows us to find peace, connection, and purpose, regardless of where we are on the ladder. For in the end, the true degree of self-actualization is not a destination, but a way of traveling. It is the courage to face our inner demons, the humility to embrace our vulnerabilities, the compassion to see the humanity in every being. It is the willingness to expand our consciousness, moment by moment, breath by breath. And the beauty of jujitsu, my friend, is that it gives us a tangible arena to practice these qualities. Each training is an opportunity to choose courage over fear, presence over distraction, surrender over control. And each time we make those choices on the mat, we become more equipped to make them in life. So the real lesson here is this. Your freedom has always been within your reach. No matter where you are on your journey, you have the power to point your inner compass to true north at any time. And every time you choose to embrace a more expansive vision of yourself, both on and off the mat, you are planting the seeds of a lasting and profound transformation. For at the end of the day, jujitsu is not just a path to physical mastery, but to the enlightenment of the soul. And the key to unlocking your full potential has always resided within you. So, my mat companion, Embrace every stage of this process with curiosity and courage. Allow yourself to be transformed by the power of flow jujitsu, knowing that every sweat shed, every fall, and every victory contributes to sculpting the masterpiece that is your life. Onward, warrior, for the journey continues. And always remember, the true opponent to overcome lies within you. Master it with compassion, wisdom, and unwavering determination. End of part one. As we reach the end of this first stage of our journey through flow jujitsu, I hope you are beginning to glimpse the transformative potential of this practice, both on and off the mat. The principles and practices we have explored so far, whoa, cultivating the flow state, developing a growth mindset, learning how to learn, and mastering the art of flow rolling, are the foundations for taking your jujitsu to a new level. By integrating them into your training, you will unlock new heights of performance, creativity, and fulfillment. Your game will become more fluid, precise, and adaptable. But the benefits go far beyond martial effectiveness. As you immerse yourself in the experience of flow in jiu-jitsu, 
you also cultivate inner qualities of presence, equanimity, and joy. You discover a wellspring of well-being and meaning that radiates into every aspect of your life. The mat becomes a microcosm for your growth as a human being. And this growth, in turn, elevates jujitsu as an art. For when each practitioner dedicates themselves not just to technical mastery, but also to personal evolution, the entire community is uplifted. We become not only better fighters, but better teachers, students, partners, and human beings. Jiu-Jitsu reveals itself as a vehicle for expressing our noblest attributes, compassion, wisdom, courage, humility. In part two of this book, we will dive even deeper into this inner journey. We will explore how flow jiu-jitsu can become a path of profound self-knowledge, dissolving the layers of the ego to reveal our true nature. We will investigate the relationship between body, mind, and consciousness, and how the practice can lead us to an experience of freedom and wholeness. This territory can be challenging as it requires us to confront our shadows and limitations. Not everyone may be ready for this dive. But if you feel the call to go beyond, beyond the body, beyond the mind, toward the source of your own awareness, then join me in exploring the true self. The mat awaits, not just as a place to train, but as a portal to the transformation of your life. May the journey of flow jiu-jitsu awaken the best in you and through you, the best in the world. Chapter 7, Healthy Body, Serene Mind. Introduction. Since time immemorial, the martial arts of the East have been much more than systems of self-defense or physical conditioning. Rooted in deep spiritual traditions, these disciplines have always recognized the training of the body as a portal for the transformation of the mind and the realization of the spirit. In Aikido, for example, each circular flowing movement is an expression of the attempt to harmonize with the life energy that permeates the universe. More than overpowering an opponent, the goal is to transcend the very notion of conflict, finding peace and balance even in the eye of the hurricane. Similarly, Tai Chi Chuan, with its graceful, precise movements, is often described as a meditation in motion. Each gesture becomes an opportunity to unify body, mind, and breath, cultivating a profound serenity and presence. These brothers' arts remind us that true mastery lies not only in physical prowess, but in the ability to use the body as a vehicle to access higher states of consciousness. They invite us to see beyond the illusion of separation between the physical and the spiritual, recognizing them as interconnected dimensions of an integrated whole. It is within this vast river of wisdom that jujitsu emerges as an art of embodied consciousness for modern times. Bearing similarities to yoga, where the practice of asanas serves as a preparation for meditative dives, the mat becomes our laboratory to explore the alchemy between body, mind, and spirit. Each training session becomes an opportunity to observe how our mental and emotional states express themselves through posture, breathing, and muscle tone. Gradually, we learn to use the body not only as a tool for technique, but as an infallible compass to navigate our inner terrains. By honoring these ancestral connections, we begin to glimpse the true potential of jujitsu as a path of awakening. Anchored in the timeless wisdom of the East, we can immerse ourselves in our practice with renewed reverence and purpose, using every moment on the mat as an invitation to return to our true self. For ultimately, the external adventure of jujitsu is merely a reflection of the internal journey toward wholeness. And it is by diving into the depths of ourselves that we discover the perennial source of peace, joy, and freedom that dwells within us all, the body as foundation. Throughout the following pages, we will explore the profound connections between body, mind, and spirit, using the gentle art as a map to guide us. Our starting point on this adventure is the body itself, this wonderful creation that allows us to experience the physical world in all its sensory richness. More than a disposable shell or a burden to be transcended, 
The body is a valuable ally in our quest for the realization of the self. As jujitsu practitioners, we have the unique opportunity to investigate the nature of the body in a direct and visceral way. Each technique learned, each fight, invites us to deepen our body awareness and refine the instrument through which we interact with reality. But the impact of this practice goes far beyond the physical domain. As we cultivate a strong, flexible, and healthy body, we pave the way for a clear, stable, and receptive mind. The ancient yogis already recognized this intrinsic relationship, using specific postures and breaths to induce meditative states. Similarly, a conscious practice of jujitsu has the potential to lead us to expanded states of perception. By synchronizing movement and breath, we release deep tensions and open space for transformative insights about who we really are. In the following pages, you will be invited to explore the body as a gateway to awakening. Through practical examples, philosophical reflections, and inspiring stories, we will discover how jujitsu can be an integrated path of self-knowledge and self-transcendence. So relax, take a deep breath, and allow yourself to dive into this investigation with a curious mind and an open heart. Together, we will explore the vast inner territories that lie hidden beneath the surface of the being, revealing treasures far beyond what the eyes can see. Healthy body, serene mind. Throughout history, various wisdom traditions have explored the deep connection between physical well-being and mental clarity. In yoga, for example, postures, asanas, are used not only to strengthen and make the body more flexible, but also to quiet the mind and open the way for meditative states. Similarly, a conscious practice of jujitsu has the potential to take us beyond physical improvement, towards greater serenity and lucidity. When we train with presence and intentionality, each movement becomes an opportunity to connect with the present moment and dissolve excess mental activity. The postures and transitions of jujitsu, when executed with mindfulness, have a profound effect on our physiological systems. Breathing deepens and stabilizes. Circulation becomes more fluid. And the nervous system is invited to alternate between states of activation and relaxation. This internal massage of organs and tissues creates a bodily environment conducive to emotional balance and clarity of reasoning. Furthermore, the total engagement required by fighting situations invites us to put daily concerns and ruminative thoughts in the background. In this state of flow, where body and mind are perfectly attuned to the present activity, we experience glimpses of inner stillness and expanded consciousness. Not by chance, many practitioners report that after an intense training session, they feel not only physically invigorated, but also mentally light, lucid, and at peace. It is as if the sweat shed on the mat carries with it the weight of mental burdens, leaving space for a broader and more serene perspective. In this chapter, we will explore how to optimize this relationship between body health and mind hygiene through the practice of jujitsu. With specific exercises and precise guidance, you will be invited to use training not only as a tool for physical conditioning, but also as a practice of integral self-improvement. Prepare to discover the immense potential that lies in the synergy between a healthy body and a serene mind. By cultivating this solid foundation, you will be paving the way for the deep and transformative insights that we will explore throughout this book. Transforming the body through breath and posture. In jujitsu, every movement, every technique is an opportunity to bring more awareness to the body and the breath. When we pay attention to the mechanics of breathing during practice, we begin to notice the profound impact it has on our physical and mental states. Shallow and agitated breathing, for example, tends to activate the sympathetic nervous system, triggering a cascade of stress responses in the body. This can leave us tense, anxious, 
and more prone to making reactive decisions on the mat instead of assertive responses. On the other hand, deep and stable breathing calms the nervous system, inducing a state of relaxation and mental clarity. When we breathe in this way, we become more present, more adaptable, and more capable of responding to the demands of the fight with creativity and fluidity. Incorporating specific breathing exercises into our jiu-jitsu practice can enhance these effects. Techniques such as diaphragmatic breathing, where we focus on expanding the abdomen with each inhalation, can be trained both during the warm-up and in the intervals between fights. Over time, this deep breathing becomes a habit, a resource always available to anchor us in the present moment. In addition to breathing, posture also has a powerful influence on our internal states. The positions we assume on the mat, whether a solid base, an active guard, or a stable mount, carry physiological and psychological impact. By adopting aligned and rooted postures, we send signals of safety and confidence to the nervous system. This allows us to access our inner resources more easily, making decisions from a place of centering and balance. Exploring the interface between posture and breathing, we create the ideal conditions for the body to operate in a state of optimal performance. And perhaps even more importantly, we open the doors to elevated states of consciousness during training. In this space of embodied presence, where every cell is vibrating with vitality and every movement is an expression of awareness, we glimpse the possibility of using jujitsu as a vehicle for profound transformation. The mat becomes a sacred laboratory where the alchemy of body, breath, and mind leads us to a tangible experience of our highest potential. Exploring the mind-body connection on the mat, the intimate relationship between our bodily and mental states becomes evident when we attentively observe the subtle details of our posture and physical attitude during jiu-jitsu practice. For example, a lowered head and unnecessarily contracted shoulders not only hinder the efficiency of movements, but also send signals of tension, fear, or discouragement to the nervous system. This body language directly influences our emotional states and our ability to think clearly and creatively during the challenges of a fight. On the other hand, when we intentionally cultivate postures that convey confidence, openness, and tranquility, even amidst the intensity of exchanges with a partner, we are establishing the ideal internal conditions for the flowering of the flow state. An upright spine, an open chest, and relaxed shoulders signal to the mind that we are safe, present, and ready to respond to the moment with fluidity and intuition. Beyond the postural aspect, the mental attitude we bring to the mat also has a direct impact on our physical performance. Thoughts of doubt, anxiety, or self-punishment create unnecessary tensions in the body, impairing motor coordination and adaptability. In contrast, a calm, focused mind, free from excessive judgment, allows the body to express itself naturally and precisely. This two-way relationship between body and mind is an invitation to use the practice of jujitsu as a laboratory of self-knowledge. Through attentive observation of our postural and mental patterns during training, we can identify areas of imbalance and consciously work to harmonize them. As we refine the sensitivity to the constant interaction between our internal and external states, we gradually transform jujitsu into an integrated path of human development. Each movement on the mat becomes an opportunity to connect more deeply with ourselves dissolving the artificial barriers between body, mind, and spirit. As we progress in this process of psychophysical integration, we become more capable of accessing our internal resources with fluidity and mastery, not only during training, but in all aspects of life. Jiu-Jitsu then reveals itself as a powerful tool for self-mastery and self-expression in the constant unfolding of existence. It's important to emphasize that the insights about the mind-body connection we cultivate in jiu-jitsu are not restricted to the moments we spend on the mat. The way we carry our bodies and the rhythm of our breathing throughout the day 
have a profound impact on our mental and emotional states, and, consequently, on how we interact with the world around us. By maintaining an aligned posture and conscious, fluid breathing as we navigate life's circumstances, we send signals of safety and balance to our nervous system. This allows us to face daily challenges from a place of centeredness, clarity, and resilience. However, it's crucial not to confuse this rooted posture with constant rigidity or tension. It's not about walking around like fighters ready for combat at every second. Rather, it's a relaxed, attentive presence, a flexible availability to dance with the ever-changing flow of life. So, the next time you find yourself hunched over the office desk with tense shoulders and shallow breath, remember, you can use this moment as an opportunity to bring a little more jujitsu into your life. Adjust your posture, breathe deeply, and return to the only moment that truly exists, here and now, the transitory nature of the body. As we delve deeper into the nature of our physical being, an intriguing perspective reveals itself. The body can be seen as a diary of substances, a living record of everything we have ever consumed and integrated. Think about it. Every cell, every tissue that makes up our body structure is, in essence, the result of a transformation of the food we eat. Through metabolic processes, what was external becomes internal, constituting the very matter that gives us form and sustenance. In this sense, the body is a chronicle in constant updating, where each meal represents a new chapter added to our personal history. We are literally what we eat, not just in the nutritional sense, but also in the deeper existential sense. This vision invites us into a relationship of greater reverence and care for what we choose to ingest. After all, we are not only feeding the body, but actively writing the narrative of our physical existence. Each portion, each ingredient, becomes seen as a direct contribution to the quality of our bodily being. But the metaphor of the diary of substances goes beyond the mere observation of bodily impermanence. It also reminds us that, just like the pages of a diary, our body is in constant renewal and transformation. Scientific studies reveal that most of the cells in our body are replaced in periodic cycles, ranging from a few days to a few years, depending on the type of tissue. This means that at every moment, we are literally reconstituting ourselves, reinventing ourselves physically and materially. This understanding sheds new light on our relationship with the body. Instead of excessively identifying with this transitory structure, we are invited to view the body as a temporary vehicle, a fleeting expression of something more essential and enduring that resides within us. In the context of jiu-jitsu, this perception encourages us to care for the body with wisdom and balance, recognizing it as a valuable instrument for our journey of self-knowledge and expression in the world. At the same time, it reminds us not to become overly attached to the physical form, understanding that our true essence transcends the limits of the flesh. In the following sections, we will further explore the implications of this view, investigating how the conscious practice of jujitsu can help us develop a healthier and more integrated relationship with our body in light of its impermanent and renewable nature. The body is foundation beyond physical limits. Now I want to invite you to dive even deeper. Let's go beyond the notion of the healthy body as a mere support for the serene mind. Let's explore how, by relating to our body in a new and subtle way, it can become a living portal to ever higher and more unified states of consciousness. The key here is to gradually transcend our primary identification with the physical body. Yes, it is a wonderful instrument, worthy of care and reverence. But in essence, we are much more than this transient structure of flesh, bones, and fluids. Think of the countless experiences you've already had that clearly go beyond the physical domain. Your thoughts, emotions, yearnings, flashes of intuition. All these phenomena point to dimensions of your being that are beyond the body. And here's the beauty. Through the integrated practice of jujitsu, with its precise postures, fluid movements, and techniques of breathing and mindfulness, we can use the body as a vehicle to access and attune to these more subtle aspects of our existence. 
Each session on the mat becomes an opportunity to deepen our bodily awareness, to refine our perception of sensations, internal impulses, and the subtle rhythms that permeate our physical structure. And as this awareness expands, we begin to glimpse that the body is, in fact, an expression of something much larger and more essential, a vast, boundless, and radiant consciousness that is our true nature. So, my friends, as we continue on this journey of body-mind integration through jujitsu, let's embrace the body as a valuable ally, but without clinging to it. Let's use it skillfully as a portal to ever-expanding states of being. And above all, let's always remain open and curious, ready to discover the vast dimensions of consciousness that lie hidden beyond the limits of physical form. In the following pages, we will explore specific practices that tread this path of awakening through the body. But for now, let's just stay with this invitation. See your body with new eyes. Relate to it as a sacred field of investigation and discovery. And allow it to always lead you back home to the luminous immensity that you are. The body as a portal to presence. In the previous topic, we began to unveil the true nature of our being beyond identification with the physical body. We saw how the integrated practice of jujitsu can help us use the body as a portal to expanded states of consciousness. Now let's deepen this exploration by investigating how cultivating presence through the body can lead us directly to the experience of our true timeless essence. Here's the crucial point. The present moment is the only reality. Past and future are mere mental constructs, tissues of memory and imagination. But the now, this eternal instant that encompasses all existence, is the abode of pure, unperturbed, and ever-available consciousness. And the body is a powerful anchor for this timeless realm. When we bring our full attention to bodily sensations, the breath, the movements, the subtle currents of energy, we are actually attuning to the now. We are freeing ourselves from the incessant flow of thoughts and resting in pure presence. In the context of jujitsu, this means bringing a meditative quality to every aspect of our practice. From the warm up to the most intense sparring, we can use the body as a portal to presence. Every conscious breath, every postural adjustment, every fluid roll becomes an opportunity to free ourselves from the past and future and dive into the infinite flow of the now. Of course, the mind tends to resist this invitation. It is used to wandering the landscapes of yesterday and tomorrow, weaving stories of victory and defeat, hope and fear. But with patient practice and clear intention, we can gently bring our attention back to the body, to this eternal instant, every time we notice the mind wandering off. And here's the beauty. The more we establish ourselves in bodily presence, the more we begin to glimpse that the now is not just a point in time, but the very essence of consciousness. We are not simply in the present moment. We are the present moment, the pure, unperturbed witness in which all phenomena arise and dissolve. So, as we continue our journey of awakening through jujitsu, let's embrace the body as a precious ally in this rediscovery of our true nature. Let's use every moment on the mat as an invitation to rest in presence, to immerse ourselves in the timeless flow of the now. And step by step, let us marvel at discovering that what we sought out there was, in fact, always here, in the clear and radiant immensity of present consciousness. Surrender to the miracle of this moment, and let the body be your guide, your portal, your sacred temple on the path to enlightenment. Beyond body illusion, living free of conditioning. In the preceding pages, we have investigated how the body can be a powerful portal to presence and heightened states of consciousness. We have seen that through the integrated practice of jujitsu, we can use the body as a vehicle to transcend identification with the physical form and glimpse our true, timeless nature. 
Now, I'd like to bring this exploration into the realm of everyday life. How can we apply these profound insights in everyday life, going beyond bodily illusion and living ever more free from limiting conditioning? Here, it is crucial to understand that most of us have been conditioned from a young age to identify primarily with the body. We have been taught to see the body as who we are, the foundation of our identity, the foundation of our sense of self. And based on that identification, we build a whole castle of beliefs and patterns of behavior. We think, I'm tall or I'm short, I'm skinny or I'm fat, I'm attractive or I'm ugly. And from those labels, we create stories about what we can or can't do, about what we deserve or don't deserve, about how others see us and treat us. But, my friends, what if this primary identification with the body was actually an illusion? What if, at the most fundamental level, we were not the body, but rather the pure and limitless consciousness that temporarily inhabits it? Imagine what it would be like to live from that understanding. Imagine relating to the body not as who you are, but as something you have, a precious but ultimately transitory and changeable instrument. What freedom that would bring. What lightness, what flexibility. What space for true self-expression. Of course, transcending years of conditioning is not an instantaneous process. It requires diligent practice, honest self-inquiry, and most of all, a willingness to let go of old identities and histories, no matter how familiar and comfortable they may seem. But every moment of bodily presence, every instant in which we remember that we are consciousness witnessing the body and not the body itself, is a step in this journey of liberation. And as we take these steps consistently, both on and off the mat, something extraordinary begins to happen. Gradually, the old identities begin to melt away, revealing a sense of being that is much vaster, much more luminous, much freer than we have ever imagined. We discover that behind all the labels and stories, there is a clear and ever-present consciousness. And from this place of clarity and connection, life becomes an increasingly spontaneous, fluid, and aligned expression of our deepest essence. We relate to the body and the world in a new way, no longer as a prison, but as an endless playground for the playful and eternally free consciousness that we are. So, my dear fellow travelers, how about we embrace this exploration together? How about we use the countless opportunities of daily life, every interaction, every challenge, every moment of self-care, as an invitation to break free from identification with the body? and live from the vastness of our true nature. It is a path that requires courage, no doubt, but I can promise you, based on my own experience, there is no more exciting adventure, no more transformative discovery, no sweeter freedom than this. No when we get stuck in the illusion that we are just this material body, it's easy to fall into the trap of living just to satisfy your pleasures and desires. We begin to obsessively seek out intense sensory experiences, whether through food, sex, drugs, or other stimuli. This unbridled pursuit of physical pleasures can quickly spiral out of control, making us slaves to our own sensations. We lose the ability to make conscious, balanced choices, and our lives revolve around the next fix of bodily gratification. The consequences of this imbalance are felt in all areas of our lives. Our relationships suffer as we become unable to authentically connect with others. Our health deteriorates as we neglect deeper needs in favor of immediate pleasures. Our sense of purpose and fulfillment withers as we lose touch with our essence. Therefore, it is crucial to constantly remind ourselves that while the body is a valuable instrument, it does not define us. We are the vast and clear consciousness that inhabits and animates this temporary physical form. The more we connect with that consciousness, the freer we become from the tyrannies of the body. Of course, this is not about denying or rejecting the body, but rather about putting it into perspective. Through practices like jujitsu, we learn to honor and care for the body, while at the same time cultivating the discernment that it is merely a manifestation of our true nature. 
May we then embrace the body as a sacred temple, but without ever confusing it with the deeper self that we are. And may we, with each passing day, awaken more and more to the immensity of consciousness that shines behind all form and name. We close this chapter here, but our journey of self-discovery continues. In the next one, we will dive into the mysteries of the mind, taking one more step towards the realization of our true essence. As we conclude this chapter on the relationship between body and consciousness, I would like to leave a final message that synthesizes the essence of this exploration. Let us learn to listen to our body with attention and compassion. It is a precious instrument, a vehicle through which we experience and interact with the world. Let us honor its needs, nourishing it with healthy foods, conscious movements, and adequate periods of rest. However, let us not allow the body to become the master of our existence. Always remember, you are not just this physical body. Your true nature is the pure and limitless consciousness that temporarily inhabits this form. Therefore, listen to the whispers of your body, but do not become a slave to them. Know how to discern between the real needs of the organism and the fleeting whims of egoic desires. Use your inner clarity to make wise and balanced choices keeping the body as a servant of your true essence. In the practice of jujitsu, we cultivate this serene mastery over the body through mindful breathing, relaxation and technique, and surrender to the flow of the present moment. We reaffirm our role as masters of this wondrous creation that is our physical vehicle. May we then honor and love our bodies without ever confusing them with who we really are. May we use this instrument wisely and lightly to express our consciousness in the world, always reminding ourselves of our true, immortal, and infinite nature. With this understanding, we move forward on our journey of self-discovery through flow jujitsu, ready now to delve into the depths of the mind, the next veil to be transcended on the path to the realization of the self. Chapter 8, Beyond the Illusion, of the Mind, Discovering Your True Essence. In the previous chapter, we explored how excessive identification with the physical body can limit us and cause suffering. We saw that by freeing ourselves from this illusion through the conscious practice of jujitsu, we can connect with a deeper, more authentic presence. Now let's take a step further and investigate another layer of our being that we often mistake for our most fundamental identity, the mind. Just as we are not our body, we are also not our thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. These are phenomena that arise and disappear on the screen of consciousness, but they do not represent who we really are. However, from a very early age, we are conditioned to identify with mental activity. We create an image of ourselves, a psychological I, based on our experiences, memories, and conditioning. And without realizing it, we become prisoners of this illusory ego, the construction of the ego, the formation of self-image. From the moment we arrive in this world, we are shaped by our experiences and interactions with the environment around us. Each stimulus, each feedback we receive from our parents and society contributes to the formation of our self-image. As babies, we have no preconceived notion of who we are. Our identity is a blank canvas waiting to be painted by the colors of experience. As we grow and interact with the world, we begin to internalize certain messages about ourselves. If we are constantly praised for our intelligence, for example, we may begin to construct an identity around being smart. If we are criticized for our appearance, we may develop a negative view of our body. Thus, our notion of who we are becomes a collage of experiences and external judgments often absorbed unconsciously. The problem is that this process of self-image formation is largely unconscious. We rarely stop to question these ideas we absorb about ourselves. We assume they are the absolute truth about who we are, when in reality they are only partial and often distorted perspectives, projecting the process onto others. Just as we construct a fixed and limited image of ourselves, 
we also tend to fit others into categories based on superficial interactions. We label people as good or bad, friends or enemies, without recognizing the inherent complexity and mutability of every human being. This tendency to project onto others the same distortions we apply to ourselves is the root of many conflicts and misunderstandings. When we interact with someone, we are not dealing with the totality of their being, but with the mental image we create of that person based on our own perceptions and prejudices, questioning the illusion of the ego. Bringing this dynamic into the light of consciousness is the first step to freeing ourselves from the prison of the ego. When we begin to recognize the illusory and transient nature of our self-image, we open space for a deeper investigation of who we really are. The invitation here is to question our most basic assumptions about ourselves and others. It is a call to recognize that the ego, this mental image we have of ourselves, is a fragile and mutable construction, not the essence of our being. Throughout this chapter, we will explore how flow jujitsu can be a powerful tool in this process of deconstructing the ego and reconnecting with our deepest nature. Through conscious practice, we will learn to strip away the layers of conditioning and identify with the pure consciousness that underlies all transitory experiences. But the truth is that just as we can observe our body, we can also observe our thoughts. And if there is an observer witnessing the mental flow, then we cannot be that flow. Our true essence lies beyond the mind. It is the pure consciousness that permeates everything. In the following pages, we will dive into the depths of the mind to understand its illusory nature. We will explore how the flow of thoughts creates the sense of psychological time, trapping us in the past or future, and robbing us of the richness of the present moment. We will also see how the practice of jujitsu can be a powerful tool to free us from mental tyranny. By cultivating the art of presence and flow in life, we learn to be masters of our mind rather than being dominated by it. Therefore, I invite you to embark on this fascinating adventure towards your true essence. Throughout this chapter, keep an open mind and a receptive heart. Be willing to question your most deeply held beliefs and marvel at the immensity of your being. Remember, you are not your mind. You are the pure and boundless consciousness in which the mind dances. An awakening to this reality is the greatest discovery a human being can make. The nature of the mind. The mind is a constant flow of thoughts, emotions, memories, and perceptions. From the moment we wake up until the instant we fall asleep, this mental river is always running, sometimes as a calm stream, other times as a turbulent cascade. The problem arises when we identify with this flow, believing that we are our thoughts. We create a sense of self from this mental activity, an image we call the ego. We come to believe that this mind-constructed entity is who we really are. But is this true? Can we reduce our existence to a cluster of transient and conditioned thoughts? The ancient wisdom of contemplative traditions invites us to question this assumption. After all, if we can observe our thoughts as a silent witness at the back of our consciousness, then we cannot be those thoughts. There must be a deeper, more essential self that transcends the mind's chatter. Therefore, the first step to freeing ourselves from mental tyranny is to recognize that we are not our mind. We are the pure and unchanging consciousness in which the mind unfolds like waves on the surface of the vast ocean of being. With this understanding, we can begin to relate to our thoughts in a wiser and more balanced way. Instead of being dominated by every mental impulse, we learn to observe the mind with clarity and discernment, choosing which thoughts to feed and which to let pass. And it is in this space of lucidity that true inner freedom flourishes. Freed from the prison of the ego, we find the courage to live from our deepest essence, honoring our unique gifts and talents. But to fully understand how the mind weaves the illusion of the ego, we need to explore another crucial aspect of human experience, psychological time. This is what we will do in the next topic, 
chronological time and psychological time. Now that we understand the illusory nature of the mind and the ego, let's explore another crucial aspect of our experience, time. There are two main types of time that affect our lives, chronological time and psychological time. Chronological time is the one marked by the clock, the calendar, the seasons. It is the constant and immutable rhythm of the universe, which follows its course regardless of our subjective experiences. Our body is born, grows, ages, and dies within this linear temporal flow. Psychological time, on the other hand, is a creation of the mind. It is our internal perception of the passage of time. Shaped by our thoughts, emotions, and psychological states, when we are anxious or bored, time seems to drag on endlessly. When we are immersed in a pleasurable activity, hours fly by unnoticed. This psychological time is deeply influenced by our memories of the past and projections of the future. We get caught in a mental web, ruminating on events that have already gone or anxiously anticipating what is yet to come. And in this process, we end up losing contact with the only reality that truly exists, the present moment. In life, as in jiu-jitsu, when we are on the mat, we are invited to surrender completely to the here and now. There is no room for mental wanderings about the past or future. Each movement demands total presence and attention. By cultivating this quality of presence through constant practice, we begin to free ourselves from the tyranny of psychological time. We learn to fully inhabit the present moment, savoring its richness and fullness, without getting lost in the mirages of the mind. And, as this presence expands beyond the mat, we discover that life is much vaster and more luminous than we ever imagined. Because at the core, the true essence of existence is not in the past or the future. It is in the eternal present, where consciousness and being merge into an infinite embrace. Therefore, may jiu-jitsu awaken us to the beauty of the moment and free us from the chains of psychological time. May it reconnect us with our timeless nature and reveal to us the peace that lies in simply being, the movement of thoughts, and the creation of psychological time. Our mind is constantly producing thoughts, an endless river of associations, memories, projections, and judgments. And it is the movement of these thoughts that generates the feeling of an I that travels through time, from the past to the present to the future. When we cling to a memory, reliving it repeatedly in our minds, we create a psychological link with the past. We become trapped in experiences that are already gone, unable to free ourselves and embrace the present moment. This attachment to the past is often accompanied by emotions such as nostalgia, regret, or resentment. Similarly, when we get lost in fantasies or anxieties about the future, we are creating a mental projection that distances us from our current reality. We become obsessed with expectations, desires, and fears, forgetting that the future is just a mirage created by the mind. And so, jumping between past and future, our thoughts create the illusion of psychological time, a false sense of continuity and progression that conceals the timeless truth of being. This is where the practice of jiu-jitsu becomes a powerful anchor for the present moment. When we are fully absorbed in the flow of the role, there is no room for mental wanderings. Each movement requires total presence and attention. And in those moments, psychological time dissolves, giving way to the vibrant immediacy of the now. Remember that behind the flow of thoughts, there is an ever-present awareness that witnesses them. That is your true nature, not the transient content of the mind, but the silent space in which it arises and disappears. The more you connect with this timeless dimension of your being, the more easily you will be able to free yourself from the spell of psychological time, and you will discover that each moment becomes an opportunity to be reborn, free from the shackles of the past and the anxieties of the future. Therefore, let our practice be a constant invitation to embrace the present 
and free ourselves from the shackles of psychological time. For it is only in the now that life truly happens, in all its richness and fullness. Imprisonment in thoughts about the past and future is really one of the greatest causes of psychological suffering in our lives. When we get stuck in the past, rehashing events that are already gone, we open the door to depression, resentment, and melancholy. We become stagnant in a time we can no longer change, missing the opportunity to fully live in the present. Similarly, when we get lost in worries and anxieties about the future, we create an inexhaustible source of stress and restlessness. We try to control the uncontrollable, anticipate all possible scenarios, and end up moving away from the peace and clarity that only the present moment can offer. This prison of psychological time is almost an epidemic in our day. We live in a culture that values the past and the future at the expense of the now. We are conditioned to live off memories and expectations, always seeking happiness in a time that never arrives. But the truth is that life only happens in the present. It is here and now that we can truly experience the fullness of being, connect with others and the world around us. When we free ourselves from the chains of the past and the future, we discover an inexhaustible source of peace, joy, and creativity within us. By cultivating this quality of presence in practice and in life, we begin to detach ourselves from the shackles of psychological time. We learn to embrace the past with compassion, without identifying with it. And we learn to plan the future with wisdom, without getting lost in unnecessary anxieties. Remember, you are not your past or your future. You are the ever-present consciousness that witnesses the flow of time. And it is in this consciousness that your true freedom and peace reside, the mental journey in time and space. As we have seen, psychological time fundamentally differs from chronological time. While clock time follows its linear and immutable course, mental time is malleable, subject to the distortions of our perceptions and emotions. This flexible nature of mental time allows us, in a way, to travel in space and time. Through our memories and imagination, we can instantly transport ourselves to past or future moments, reliving experiences or anticipating possibilities. This capacity for mental travel can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it allows us to learn from the past and plan for the future. We can revisit difficult situations with a new perspective, applying the wisdom and discernment we have acquired over time. Thus, events that once controlled us through trauma or resentment can be reframed and integrated in a healthier way. For example, we can remember a moment when someone or something caused us suffering. With the maturity we have today, we can mentally visualize a different, more balanced response, or see that such a situation would be avoided with the knowledge we have now. This exercise does not change the past, but it transforms our relationship with it, freeing us from destructive emotional patterns. Similarly, we can use imagination to mentally rehearse future situations, cultivating the qualities and skills we wish to manifest. This type of creative visualization, when combined with concrete action in the present, can be a powerful tool for personal transformation. However, the danger arises when we get lost in these mental journeys, disconnecting from present reality. When we become obsessed with the past or the future, we forget that life only happens in the here and now. Memories and expectations become prisons that prevent us from fully embracing the moment. That's why the practice of jujitsu is so valuable. It anchors us in the present, constantly reminding us that the only reality is the one unfolding before us. Every movement, every breath, every adjustment requires total presence and attention. There is no room for mental wanderings when we are immersed in the flow of the role. Therefore, may we use our capacity for mental travel wisely, learning from the past and planning for the future, but always returning to the anchor of the present. 
for it is in the now that life pulsates in all its fullness, inviting us to embrace the mystery and beauty of each instant. A time for change. True change happens in an instant, in the present moment, through a conscious decision. We don't need time to transform ourselves because time is just a mental construct, a way of organizing our experiences. The traumas and emotional wounds of the past exist only as memories in our mind. But we are not those memories. We are the consciousness that witnesses them. When we identify with the past, we get stuck in a loop, recycling old patterns and limiting our potential for growth. Similarly, when we project the future based on our past experiences, we are only perpetuating those patterns. The future becomes a shadow of the past preventing us from embracing the infinite possibilities of the present moment. The key to liberation lies in doing what needs to be done, here and now, without attachment to the results. When we act with presence and awareness, aligned with our deepest values, we plant the seeds of genuine change. And those seeds can only be planted in the fertile soil of the present. Jiu-Jitsu teaches us the art of inhabiting the moment, of responding to what life presents us with wisdom, courage, and compassion. Each movement on the mat is an opportunity to free ourselves from the past and the future to connect with the fullness of being. Therefore, may we embrace the transformative power of the now, recognizing that we are much more than our memories and mental projections. May we act with integrity and detachment, confident that each instant contains within itself the seed of our evolution. The present is a gift. Let's unwrap it with gratitude and live it with intensity. The mind as dojo, the path of consciousness. Throughout our journey, we have explored the deep connections between philosophy, martial arts, and the study of the human mind. At the heart of this confluence, we find the search for clear perception of reality, free from the distortions of the ego and conditioning. Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, was one of the pioneers in this inner investigation. His teachings illuminate the path to liberation from suffering through the training of the mind. In Buddhism, the mind is seen as the soil where the seeds of our actions, karmas, are planted and their fruits harvested. Therefore, purifying the mind, eradicating negative patterns and cultivating virtues becomes the key to personal transformation. Similarly, martial arts that embrace Eastern philosophy, such as flow jiu-jitsu, are powerful vehicles for this journey of self-discovery. Rigorous training and constant discipline serve as tools to unveil the layers of the ego, revealing the impermanent nature of the identities we construct. The practitioner is invited to act from a space of presence and authenticity, beyond the limitations of preconceived beliefs. In this process, we discover that the ego is a mental construct, an accumulation of memories, thoughts, and conditioning. But behind this transitory structure, there is an immutable awareness, the true self that observes without identifying with the fluctuations of the mind. By aligning ourselves with this silent consciousness, we begin to free ourselves from the bonds of the ego. On the mat, this understanding translates into every movement, every technique, every interaction. The martial artist is called to act not from automatic responses, but from a place of clarity and spontaneity. The movements become manifestations of consciousness, not of the ego. Thus, training becomes a spiritual practice, a moving meditation. As we deepen this investigation, we realize that we are, in essence, beings of pure consciousness with unlimited potential. By detaching ourselves from the illusions of the ego, we reconnect with the vastness of existence, with the interconnectedness of all phenomena. In this space of union, we experience true freedom and unconditional compassion. Therefore, may we embrace our inner journey with the dedication of a martial artist and the curiosity of a mind explorer. May each challenge on the mat and in life become an opportunity to detach from the ego and awaken to our deepest nature. For it is in this awakening that we find lasting peace and transformative wisdom. Final chapter. 
the observer. The essence of flow. Jiu-Jitsu, introduction. Throughout this book, we have embarked on a journey of exploration and transformation through flow jiu-jitsu. We started with the fundamentals of the flow state, examining the conditions necessary to access it and the practices that help us cultivate it on the mat and beyond. We have seen how flow can elevate our performance, accelerate our learning, and unlock our creative potential. More than that, we discovered how the principles of flow jiu-jitsu can permeate all areas of our lives, making us more present, adaptable, and aligned with our true essence. Now, we come to the apex of this journey, a final exploration of the nature of consciousness itself. In the previous chapters, we focused mainly on the relationship between flow and our experience of body and mind. But there is an even deeper dimension to be investigated, the pure consciousness that underlies and enables all experiences. In this final chapter, we will embark on a direct investigation of the nature of this consciousness. We will question our assumptions about who we are and what is real, paving the way for a transformative understanding of our deepest being. This is not merely an intellectual undertaking, but a living exploration to be carried out in the laboratory of the mat and daily life. Every moment of practice in jujitsu becomes an opportunity for this ultimate inquiry, for bringing the light of awareness to our moment to moment experience. What we will discover may shake our most fundamental conceptions about ourselves and reality. It may lead us to a freedom and peace that do not depend on external circumstances, but emanate from our own core. So I invite you to embark on this final exploration with an open mind and a curious heart. The insights that await may not only transform your jujitsu, but your life. Let's take the first step on this journey of self-discovery by bringing up the central question, who am I really beyond body and mind? The answer may surprise you in ways you never imagined. Beyond body and mind, at the heart of flow, jujitsu is an invitation to question our most basic assumptions about who we are. From an early age, we have been conditioned to identify with our body and our mind, to believe that we are a physical being with a name, an appearance, and a personal history and that our mind, with its thoughts and emotions, constitutes our innermost self. But what if this fundamental understanding is incomplete or even mistaken? What if our true self is something far vaster and deeper? Consider, your body is in constant change, every cell replaced many times over in the course of your life. Your beliefs, thoughts, and emotions are equally fluid, arising and passing like clouds in the sky. If you are not these changeable things, then who are you really? Flow Jiu-Jitsu invites us to directly investigate this question on the mat. When we are totally immersed in practice, there are moments when identification with body and mind dissolves. In the deepest states of flow, there is no longer a separate I doing the technique. There is only the technique happening spontaneously and effortlessly. These moments of total absorption are a glimpse of a deeper truth that in our essence, we are neither the body nor the mind, but the awareness that pervades and transcends them. This is not just a philosophical idea, but something that can be experienced directly. And jujitsu, with its constant invitation to be fully present, is a powerful portal to this realization. Some practices to explore. This truth on the mat. During training, bring a part of your attention to the sensation of I am, this sense of presence, of being aware, which is constant even as thoughts and sensations change. <laughs> when you notice you have identified with a thought or emotion, gently remind yourself that these are just temporary events in awareness. They do not define who you are. In the moments of stillness between positions, turn your attention to the inner silence behind all sounds and thoughts. Rest in that quietude, even if only for a few seconds. As we explore jujitsu with this attitude of inquiry, the boundaries of our sense of self start to expand. Gradually, we may begin to glimpse a vaster identity, one that is not confined to body and mind, 
but encompasses and transcends them. This is the first step in a journey of self-discovery that can change everything. By questioning our most basic identification, we open the door to immense freedom and peace. The silent observer, if we are neither the body nor the mind, then who are we? The key to this question lies in a subtle facet of our experience often overlooked in the busyness of daily life. In every moment, there is an awareness that is cognizant of everything that arises, thoughts, emotions, sensations, perceptions. This awareness is not affected by the content it observes. It simply witnesses without judgment or attachment. We can call this awareness the silent observer. It is the unchanging backdrop against which all mental and physical phenomena occur. Normally, we are so absorbed in the objects of our awareness that we overlook awareness itself. We are hypnotized by thoughts, lost in emotions, identified with the body. But through the practice of flow jujitsu, we can begin to bring this deeper dimension of our experience into the foreground. When we are on the mat, totally present to the moment, there is a quality of witnessing that starts to emerge. Even in the midst of the intensity of a role, a part of us remains calm and centered, simply observing what is happening. This is the silent observer in action. And the more we attune to this witnessing presence, the more we begin to realize that it is our true self, the pure awareness that pervades and enables all experiences. Some practices to cultivate the awareness of the observer in jujitsu. During the flow roll, periodically remember to redirect a portion of your attention to the awareness that is aware of the experience. Ask yourself, who is watching all this? When a strong thought or emotion arises during a fight, see if you can witness it without getting caught up in it. Observe it as a passing event in consciousness. In the moments of rest between workouts, turn your attention to the sense of presence, the pure I am behind all mental phenomena. As we become more familiar with the silent observer, a subtle but profound shift begins to occur. Gradually, our identification shifts from the content of our experience to the consciousness that permeates it. This is a crucial step on the path of flow jujitsu. By establishing ourselves as the conscious witness, we gain immense freedom and clarity. We are no longer controlled by the whims of the mind. Instead, we see them for what they are temporary events in the vast space of consciousness. And yet, that's not the end of the journey. Even the silent observer ultimately gives way to even deeper realization. For when we investigate further, we find that even the duality of observer and observed finally dissolves into a transcendent unity. Investigating the observer, establishing yourself as the silent watcher, is a transformative step on the path to flow jujitsu. From the perspective of this silent witness, we gain a new freedom and clarity, no longer identifying with the changing contents of mind and body. But the journey of self-discovery doesn't end here. In fact, it is at this point that the deepest investigation begins. For even the duality of observer and observed, when closely examined, reveals itself to not be the final truth. To deepen this understanding that the observer is, in essence, the observed, we can engage in a sincere and direct investigation of our experience. Let's start with a simple yet profound inquiry. Can there be an observer without something to observe? Think about it. If there were no thoughts, emotions, sensations, in short, if there were no experiences, could there be an observer? Isn't the observer's very existence intrinsically tied to and dependent on the existence of the observed. Now let's turn to the nature of the observed. When a thought arises in consciousness, can we say it is separate from the consciousness that perceives it? Or is the thought made of the same substance as consciousness? Isn't the thought itself a movement in consciousness? The same can be said for any other experience. An emotion, a bodily sensation, a sense perception. All these experiences arise and dissolve in consciousness, are made of consciousness. There isn't a single element of our experience 
that is outside of consciousness. This leads us to a startling realization. If everything we observe is an expression of consciousness, and we are that observing consciousness, then observer and observed are ultimately one reality. Consciousness is always observing itself, playing with itself, dancing with itself. It's as if consciousness is a vast ocean, and every thought, every emotion, every perception are waves arising from and returning to the ocean's vastness. Can we say the wave is separate from the ocean? Or is the wave simply the ocean taking a particular form, temporarily? Similarly, can we say the observed is separate from the observer? Or are they simply the one consciousness taking different forms, playing the game of being the observer and the observed? When this understanding dawns, a profound transformation begins to occur. The sense of separation between I and other, between inside and outside, starts to dissolve. We recognize that our true identity is not an isolated entity, encapsulated in a body and a mind, but the vast and limitless consciousness itself, within which all experiences arise and disappear. And with this recognition comes a tremendous freedom. We no longer need to cling to or resist any experience, for we recognize that they are all temporary expressions of our true nature. We can embrace each moment, each interaction, each challenge with an openness and lightness that previously seemed impossible. Consider, can the observer truly be separate from what is observed, or are they ultimately one single reality? Let's explore this question directly in the laboratory of the mat. The next time you are practicing flow roll, take a few moments to turn your attention to the silent observer. Be aware of this conscious presence that witnesses all thoughts, emotions, and sensations that arise. Now turn the attention of the observer onto itself. Try to observe the observer itself. Who is aware of the observer? What do you find when you try to locate or grasp this witnessing presence? If you investigate sincerely and thoroughly, you may discover something surprising. The observer ultimately cannot be found. When you look for the source of consciousness, all you find is more consciousness. This points to a profound truth, that the observer and the observed are not two separate entities, but expressions of a single reality. The consciousness that observes and the consciousness that is observed are, in essence, one and the same. This insight has the potential to turn our understanding of who we are upside down. It suggests that our true nature is not an individual entity separate from the world, but the non-dual consciousness itself from which all phenomena emerge and to which they return. And yet, this understanding cannot remain merely intellectual. It must be realized directly, lived as our most intimate experience. And this is where flow jujitsu really shines as a path of awakening. For in moments of deepest flow, when the mind quiets and all dualities collapse, what remains is pure consciousness, timeless, unchanging, infinite, in those moments, there is no more separation between inner and outer, observer and observed. There is only the single reality shining in its intrinsic perfection. Every moment on the mat is an opportunity for this awakening. Each time we surrender completely to what is happening, without resistance or reservation, we touch this timeless domain. And the more we taste this state, the more it permeates our life off the mat as well. This is the ultimate invitation of flow jujitsu, to use our practice as a vehicle for the deepest realization, to bring the light of inquiry to each moment, accepting nothing as final truth until it is confirmed in our direct experience. And with each step on the path, to remember that the peace we seek is not found in some future state, but is always available here and now in the boundless vastness of our true nature the realization of pure consciousness. As our investigation deepens, an extraordinary realization begins to dawn, that behind all the changing phenomena of mind and body, there's an unchanging dimension of our experience, pure consciousness itself. This is not a personal consciousness belonging to a separate individual, 
It is universal consciousness, the substratum of all existence. It is the primordial I am that precedes all thoughts, emotions, and perceptions. Normally, we are so absorbed in the content of our experience that we overlook the consciousness that makes it possible. We identify with the body, get lost in thought attached to emotions, all while pure consciousness remains as the unrecognized background of all these experiences. But as we practice flow jujitsu with an attitude of inquiry, something remarkable begins to happen. Gradually, our identification starts to shift from the transient phenomena to the unchanging consciousness that permeates them. As we increasingly establish ourselves as this pure consciousness, an indescribable freedom reveals itself. No longer are we slaves to the whims of the mind. Instead, we recognize them as mere temporary events, arising and vanishing in the vast space of consciousness. This is not a merely intellectual realization, but something that must be lived directly. And flow jujitsu provides us with the perfect ground for this lived experience. In moments of deepest flow, when the mind falls completely silent, and all dualities collapse, what remains is pure consciousness, timeless, unchanging, infinite. In these moments, there is no longer a separation between inner and outer, observer and observed. There is only the one reality shining in its intrinsic perfection. These glimpses of pure consciousness are the deepest secret of flow jujitsu. They point to our true nature, which is not a separate individual being, but the very consciousness from which all beings and all things emerge. And the most remarkable thing is that this consciousness is not something distant or inaccessible. It is the most intimate reality, the core of our being. It is the I am that shines incessantly, even when obscured by the clouds of thoughts and emotions. So the ultimate invitation of flow jujitsu is simply this, to recognize our true nature as pure consciousness here and now. It's not a matter of achieving some elevated state, but of relaxing into the reality that has always been. And through constant practice on the mat, we can make this recognition increasingly stable and integrated. Every moment of total presence, every surrender to the flow, is an opportunity to taste our essential nature. As this realization deepens, it permeates every aspect of our life. No longer do we live as separate beings struggling against the world. Instead, we embrace every moment as an expression of the one consciousness, the reality. When we talk about reality in this context, we are diving into the depths of the human experience and questioning our most basic assumptions about what is real and what is illusory. The truth is that most of our lives are lived in the realm of the transitory. Thoughts come and go, Emotions arise and disappear. The body ages and transforms. But if we look closely, we will see that there is something that remains constant amidst all these changes. The pure consciousness that witnesses the entire flow of experience. This consciousness is not affected by the content that appears within it. Just as the sky remains undisturbed, whether clear or cloudy, consciousness remains serene and unchanging regardless of what thoughts or emotions are present. This is where true reality resides, not in the transient forms that appear and disappear, but in the timeless space of pure presence that contains everything. This consciousness is what you are at your deepest essence, not a separate entity encapsulated in a body and mind, but the unlimited field of consciousness itself in which all existence unfolds. When we awaken to this reality, the entire game of life is seen in a new light. The dramas of the ego lose their urgency, for they are recognized as temporary ripples on the surface of being. Attachment to the past and anxiety about the future give way to an ever-deepening rest in the eternal present. This doesn't mean that we become indifferent to life or stop engaging with the world. On the contrary, as we become increasingly stabilized in the timelessness of pure consciousness, we become more present, responsive, and loving in all our interactions. Therefore, the invitation here is to use your practice on the mat 
as a portal to this timeless dimension of being. When you tune into the body awareness and become fully present, the mind spontaneously quiets and you can savor the inherent peace of your true nature. With time and practice, this awakened presence becomes increasingly stable until it permeates every aspect of your life. And perhaps in a moment of grace, the search for reality comes to an end, for it is seen as unnecessary. After all, what could be more real than the luminous immensity of consciousness that you already are and always have been? And if all content that arises in consciousness, including the sense of a separate I, is recognized as impermanent and insubstantial, what remains? What is always present, no matter what appears or disappears? What remains when the waves of experience settle is pure consciousness itself, the awake, contentless presence that is your true nature. It is the vast and serene space in which all thoughts, emotions, and perceptions arise and pass without ever disturbing its inherent peace. This consciousness is timeless, unchanging, infinite. It was never born and will never die. It is the most intimate sense of being, the I am that precedes all thoughts, the naked luminosity of self-illuminating presence. This is your true face before you were born your deepest essence that cannot be touched by any passing experience. And the most amazing thing is, this presence is immediately available here and now. There is no need to look anywhere else. May these words not be taken as mere ideas, but as an invitation for direct investigation. After all, the entire journey of flow jujitsu has brought us here, to the threshold of this profound recognition. So turn within. Allow everything you are not to dissolve in the light of your awakened presence. Relax back into the serene vastness that you are, the pure, immaculate, and free consciousness. For in the end, this is the greatest treasure that flow jiu-jitsu has to offer. Not just athletic prowess or martial mastery, but a doorway to ultimate realization a realization that brings unshakable peace, a joy that doesn't depend on circumstances, and a loving openness to the entire experience of life. Transiting between body, mind, and spirit. Our existence is marked by a continuous dance between different states of consciousness. During waking, we are immersed in the world of senses and mental activity. In dreaming, we enter a oniric realm where reality takes fluid and symbolic forms. And in deep sleep, we plunge into a vast ocean of peace and silence where all activity ceases. And yet, behind all these transitory states, there is a perennial and immutable being. This pure consciousness, this fundamental I am, remains as the silent backdrop of all experience. It is from this space of fullness and wholeness that all phenomena arise and dissolve. The great challenge is to learn to maintain contact with this essential dimension, even amidst the vicissitudes of life. This is where the practice of jujitsu can be a powerful ally. By cultivating the art of presence and surrender on the mat, we begin to glimpse this being that transcends body and mind. When we are truly awake and present, we realize that the states of waking, dreaming, and deep sleep are temporary manifestations that arise and dissolve on the screen of consciousness. During the waking state, it is common to identify with the flow of thoughts and emotions, losing touch with the essential being that observes all these phenomena. This waking dream where we get carried away by memories of the past, anticipations of the future, or fantasies, creates a mental fog that blurs our clear perception of the present moment. In night dreams, on the other hand, the subconscious mind frees itself from the constraints of logic and linearity, creating symbolic narratives that reflect our fears, desires, and internal processes. Upon waking, we often recognize the illusory nature of these dreams, realizing that we temporarily identified with the dream content. However, we rarely apply this same understanding to our waking dreams. The repetitive thought patterns and stories we constantly tell ourselves. These automatic mental movements create a subjective reality that obscures the direct experience of what is. 
When we dive into deep sleep, on the other hand, even this mental activity ceases. In this state, there is no sense of separate individuality, only the vast silence and timeless peace of pure consciousness. Upon waking, we carry a spark of that stillness with us, although it is quickly obscured by the return to identification with the body and mind. Therefore, the invitation is to recognize, amidst the busyness of waking life, those glimpses of clarity in which we glimpse our true essence, and to remember, again and again, to disentangle ourselves from the web of thoughts and rest in the naked presence of the moment, where dreams reveal themselves as dreams and the eternal being shines in all its splendor. For it is in this constant surrender to what is, in this continuous awakening from the trance of mental identification, that life reveals itself in all its sacred and luminous dimensions, and with time and practice, we walk ever more firmly in the direction of permanent lucidity, where dream and waking unify in the eternal embrace of awakening. Flow Jiu-Jitsu as a Gateway to Awakening Having understood the nature of pure consciousness, we can now see how the practice of flow Jiu-Jitsu can be a powerful gateway to this supreme realization. In moments of true flow on the mat, when the mind becomes silent and we become a pure presence in movement, we are actually tasting our true nature. The experience of flow is nothing more than a glimpse of pure consciousness operating through us without obstacles. Think about it. When we are totally absorbed in the flow role, without hesitation between thought and action, who is there? There is no separate E planning and controlling, only a spontaneous intelligence expressing itself freely. In these moments, the illusion of being the body-mind temporarily dissolves, and what remains is pure consciousness, awake, vast, and fluid. It is a taste of our true being. So each training session becomes an opportunity to reconnect with this experience, to remember who we are beyond the layers of conditioning and concepts. Gradually, the flow state ceases to be an occasional peak and becomes our predominant mode of operating. More deeply, our practice of jujitsu can serve as a laboratory for the ultimate investigation. The great question, who am I? Instead of seeking the answer at the level of the intellect, we can use flow roles as opportunities to let go of identities and dive directly into the experience of being. When frustration, fear, the need to control arise, instead of getting lost in these states, we can ask ourselves, to whom is all this arising? Who is aware of these passing waves? We can use everything that appears as a reminder to return to. That which witnesses everything with ever-present equanimity. Day after day, fight after fight, we disidentify with the transient and awaken to the eternal that we are. The mat becomes a dojo of self-discovery. The body and mind become gateways to the infinite. This is the ultimate promise of flow jujitsu that through this practice, we not only become more skilled artists, but that we realize our deepest nature, that we find at last the unconditional peace and freedom that is our innate inheritance. Living from consciousness. The impact of this realization, this awakening, goes far beyond the mat. In fact, it fundamentally transforms every aspect of life. Imagine living totally established in conscious presence, aligned with the intelligence and flow of life. Without internal resistance, without the constant need to control and protect, without the weight of a limited identity to carry, just a light and responsive openness to the present moment, a constant unfolding of essence. In this state, life becomes a dance, a spontaneous celebration. Our relationships deepen, because we are truly present, without egoic agendas. Our work becomes an expression of love and service. Every exchange, however simple, is imbued with meaning and beauty. It is not just about improving our martial skills, but radically transforming the way we live, to open ourselves fully to life and allow consciousness to flow through us without obstruction. 
So, my dear fellow travelers, may you accept the call of flow jujitsu at its deepest level. May you have the courage to use your practice as a gateway to the ultimate truth of what you are. And may you, day by day, awaken more and more to the immensity of consciousness that shines behind every form, every experience. This is the greatest gift, the greatest treasure, and it is right here, waiting only for your recognition. Final Considerations As we come to the end of this transformative journey exploring flow jiu-jitsu, I hope you have found not only techniques to enhance your performance on the mat, but also glimpses of a new way of relating to life as a whole. Regardless of your personal beliefs, whether you are an atheist, agnostic, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, or follower of any other faith, cultivating the perception of who you really are beyond mental conditioning can bring immense benefits here and now. If we believe that everything ends with death, Living in a flow state allows us to extract the most out of this existence, experiencing a full, authentic life free from the limitations of a conditioned mind. Imagine reaching the end of life having truly lived rather than just existing on autopilot. On the other hand, if we believe in a continuous journey of consciousness after death, this clarity about our true nature becomes the ultimate map. With this awareness, we are much more apt to perceive the doors to paradise, elevated states of consciousness, both in this life and in any other. You see, when we are identified with our thoughts, emotions, and social roles, we are like a surfer who confuses himself with the waves. We are at the mercy of the tides of life, constantly oscillating between euphoria and fear. But by recognizing that we are, in fact, the entire ocean, the unchanging consciousness behind all passing waves, we gain an anchor of peace and stability that no external circumstance can shake. We no longer need to fight against life because we know that we are life itself expressing itself in infinite forms. This is where the constant flow state springs from, from a deep acceptance and surrender to the present moment. Not a passive surrender, but a fluid and creative participation in the dance of life. And the most amazing thing, this is not a distant reality to be achieved, but our innate condition, not something to be developed, but recognized and remembered, moment by moment. So, no matter what you believe or don't believe, the invitation remains. Use your jujitsu practice as a laboratory to explore the nature of your experience. Question your most basic assumptions. Be willing to unlearn everything you think you know about yourself and about reality. For the less attached we are to fixed ideas, the more we open ourselves to the vast mystery of being. And, perhaps, by relaxing the boundaries of a limited identity, we will discover that we are infinitely vaster and freer than we ever dreamed. It has been an honor to share this journey with you. May we all, more and more, live from the place of clarity, lightness, and constant presence that is our true home.